the network. Yeah. The Female Solution Global Radio TV Show invites you to an invigorating conversation with our team of hosts Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Time. Start your week with Monday Morning Mindfulness with Zelda Speaks. Tuesdays, Self-Sell Care with Jody Susan. Wednesdays, Repairing Broken Families with Naima Latif and co-host Kareem Hamid. Thursdays, Soulful Solutions with Dr. Debbie Green. And Fridays, Health and Well-Being with Viata. Saturdays, tune in 12 noon to 2 p.m. Central Time. First Saturday, Success Strategies with Jana. Second Saturday, Wendy Williams Esquire on Relationships. Third Saturday, Move Around with Deborah. And fourth Saturday, Wisdom with Mama D. Join us Sundays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time for Soul Purpose Healing with Beata. Call in and comment 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak to the host and be a part of the solution. Grand Rising, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks, the stressologist. Any stress in your life? Well, most of us do. Unfortunately, we don't know what to do with that stress, especially as it relates to worry. I was once a worry wart, worried about everything, and I finally figured it out with some training. Yeah, I've been certified with the American Society of Training and Development. National Speakers Association, and a host of others. But none of those organizations helped me stop worrying. They just gave me validation for the public to see what credentials I have. So the credentials I, I have now are from life experience, and I've learned how not to worry. And you can learn how not to worry, too. Because it is indoctrinated in us to worry. We don't have the answers, so we think the worst is going to happen. Well, I got a solution to that. And that pro and that is the worry workshop. So I'm going to pull that up for whoops, pull that up for you on my blog. Why do you worry when you don't have to? Go to my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com, and you can sign up right there and find out how you. And remember, sharing is caring. If you care about yourself and, and your loved ones, help them see their way out of a mess. Give them the gift. It makes a great birthday gift. It makes a great holiday gift. So instead of running to the store, getting something that they really might not need, give them a worry-free life. Give them the gift of a worry-free existence. And thanks for sharing. Make it a great day. Power to transform this world. We can end crime and violence if we all and share our And rising, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks, the stressologist. Any stress in your life? Well, most of us do. Unfortunately, we don't know what to do with that stress, especially as it relates to worry. I was once a worry wart, worried about everything, and I finally figured it out with some training. Yeah, I've been certified with the American Society of Training and Development. National Speakers Association, and a host of others. But none of those organizations helped me stop worrying. They just gave me validation for the public to see what credentials I have. So the credentials I, I have now are from life experience, and I've learned how not to worry. And you can learn how not to worry, too. Because 
it is indoctrinated in us to worry. We don't have the answers, so we think the worst is going to happen. Well, I got a solution to that. And that pro and that is the worry workshop. So I'm going to pull that up for whoops, pull that up for you on my blog. Why do you worry when you don't have to? Go to my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com, and you can sign up right there and find out how you. And remember, sharing is caring. If you care about yourself and, and your loved ones, help them see their way out of a mess. Give them the gift. It makes a great birthday gift. It makes a great holiday gift. So instead of going to the store getting something that they really might not need, give them a worry-free life. Give them the gift of a worry-free existence. And thanks for sharing. Make it a great day. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach, at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. Green rising. And thank you for joining me today as I get rid of the echo. Welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks. And it is a little sunny today, and I have no complaints, but I'm a little um, discombobulated here, but that's okay because I have you here. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Me and my tea. Gotta have my tea to start the day. It, today is a powerful day. We will be um, joined by two former uh, NFL players, uh, Montre Hardich and Lance Kurse, and they are changing the game of football. So you be sure and tune in uh, this morning. If you are headed out and about this morning, it is going to be crazy as it always is. But before I do that, let me remind you if you're selling, uh, celebrating a birthday, happy Earth Day birthday born day to you. Today is Monday, uh, April 10th, and we're in April already. Um, belated happy Earth Day birthday born day if today's your birthday. And congratulations to Daryl Lynn and her husband, uh, Walter Hall uh, went to their birthday party Saturday. Can you see the glass? It says happy 75th. It's on there somewhere. Can you see that? I don't want to on my computer. So <laughs> anyway, happy birthday, 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 born day. Walter Hall. And if you're celebrating a birthday, we're celebrating it with you. 
Uh, if you are headed out and about this morning, traffic and weather is sponsored by Karen Kelly of iText.com. And if you are an entrepreneur or business owner and you have a product or uh, service to sell, this is the place to be. As we take a look at the expressways, it is going to be 70 degrees today and 75 tomorrow. Yay! Uh, expect delays if you are on the metro this morning. There's a Metro Pacific Northwest line. It's stuck on the tracks. What train gets stuck on the track? Metro does. Uh, no reported delays on CTA. Uh, inbound on the Kennedy, it's another story. 57 minutes, all, almost an hour inbound, 30 minutes on the reverse. On the Eaton's inbound, it's 28. Uh, 17 at the, uh, excuse me, 19 on the outbound. Uh, Dempster inbound, there's a car accident, so you can expect delays there. On the Eisenhower, it's 46 minutes in, 24 out. On the Stevenson, 29 in and 21 out. Southbound uh, at Cicero between 59th and 63rd, there's a crash, so expect delays if you're headed to the airport. On the Dan Ryan, it's 15 in and 13 out. On the Bishop Ford, 15 and 11. And on Dusable, Lakeshore Drive, it is 11 minutes in and 9 minutes out. And that's your traffic and weather sponsored by Karen Kelly of iTex.com. And <coughs> your... Remember to set those DVRs for uh, Sundays at midnight. Excuse me, that's the old time. Tuesdays at six, Wednesdays at one on channel 19 to see the Higher Learning Network TV show. And always on our YouTube channel, Higher Learning TV show. And, and you can call in after the... 7.30 hour. And that's when our guests will be here. And remember to go to diabeticdonut.com. And it's now it's time for your spiritual thought for the day. Taken from uh, Mike House, who says, I surrender to the spiritual me. Monday, April 10th. Sometimes we, we may forget to pause and breathe. As human beings, we can become so consumed with doing and being in action that we become imbalanced in our living. All the constant doing may lead to feelings of exhaustion. We put dress on ourselves, excuse me, we put stress on ourselves emotionally, mentally, and physically. And our goals seem to move further away, further away rather than closer to us. Today, I remember that there is a wisdom in me that knows the best way to receive that which I desire. As I let go of working hard, I surrender to spirit. My vibration increases and my desires flow to me with ease. I surrender to the spiritual me, I allow my spiritual me to take lead. I let go of working hard and welcome the ease of well-being. Thank you, wisdom, in me, through me, as me, around me, through the Christ within, and so it is. Get wisdom, get understanding, and turn not aside from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will save you. That's Proverbs 4 five and six. And that's your Monday morning mindfulness inspiration from Mike House. And if you would like to be included in that weekly, I'm sorry, not weekly, daily, you can text us and we will include uh, you in the information to send to Mike. So you can text Monday morning mindfulness to 219-699-2114 for updates. And just thought I would share that with you. Be sure and check out diabeticdonut.com if you are a, a person who has been cooped up in the house like most of us have been over the last couple of years. Probably ate a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Not drinking enough water. Mm -hmm. Might be pre-diabetic. I was pre-diabetic for 10 years. So I know if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. So 
go to diabeticdonut.com and download that different that um ebook it's called how i reversed type 2 diabetes and it is now time for your monday morning mindfulness meditation you know what that means yeah get comfortable um looking at my comments Su suzanne suzanne uh suzanne essentials grand rising my sister thank you so much for joining me this morning down there in the state of florida uh, not florida georgia thank you for sending some sun we got some heat today so uh, I am I'm, I'm ecstatic about that because uh, we got 75 and 80. That don't happen here in Chicago. <laughs> so thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. But now it is time for a Monday morning mindfulness meditation. And it's time for us to spend some time with self because we spend, especially women, we spend so much time helping others, preparing others. And we somehow kind of miss that self-care so that's what this is is self-care so all we're going to do is open up your chakras this morning we're simply going to allow you to be in a space of healing a space and a time that is all yours where you can spend attention on self and not Others. So we're simply going to breathe in to the count of five through the nose. And when you breathe in, I want you to feel your chest expand. If you don't feel your chest expand like that, you're not breathing deep enough and you won't get the experience. And it's the experience that I want you to have because if you're not breathing deep enough, you are not going to feel what we're feeling this morning. So let us prepare ourselves. And when you hear this sound, just know it's a reminder to gather your thoughts back to your breath so you can focus on that. Because, you know, your mind will wander, all the things, your to-do list and all of that. Just put that to the side. This is your time right here, right now. Right, Tony? All right. All right. So, are you going to meditate with us this morning? Okay. Sit up straight in your chair, feet flat on the floor, nothing in your hands, nothing in your lap. And if you have a, a high back chair like I do, can't see that there. Just I always turn and stretch like that. But anyway, we're just going to start Inhale deeply. And exhale. Oh, that feels good. That inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale. Once more. Inhale deeply. Hold it. And this time turn to the side. If you got a high back chair, yeah, so your inners can feel the stretch that's going on within that's on the inside. Yeah, feel that stretch. Exhale. Inhale once more. And as you exhale, stretch again, turn to the side. Yeah, give that body some movement. 80-year-old lady told me at the gym, she said, baby, a body in motion stays in motion. So we want to stay in motion. That's what we do here at the Higher Learning Network. We even have something called the Higher Learning Hip Roll, where we roll our hips from side to side. Because a body in what? Body in motion stays in motion. Let us continue to breathe in. Hold it for five seconds and then blow it out your, your mouth. You should feel a relief. I feel all that in here once more. Inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale. And just feel what that feels like. Breath coming in and out of your body. Continue to breathe. We don't have to breathe together as long as you're breathing. Inhale. Hold it. And exhale. Now, if you are breathing long enough and deep enough, you will feel a sensation because the breath is your first arm of defense in this chaotic world that we live in. Let's breathe in together. Breathe in. Hold it. And exhale as we give thanks for the power of the breath because look at you breathing all on your own. Somebody somewhere has a trachea in their throat, has uh, respiratory illnesses, diseases, and things of that nature. And you can breathe on your own. Give thanks. Mm -hmm. Inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale. And let's take this one long, last deep inhale together. 
hold it, bringing that breath up from the top of the head down through the face and the forehead and landing on the shoulders, blow it out. Bringing that breath on down through the solar plexus and the sides and the back and the buttocks and the thighs and the knees. Oh yes, honey, rub those knees cause those knees keep us mobile. Get from point A to point B. And I always give a shout out to my PT, my physical therapist, Colleen Fogarty and um, Sabrina and Pedro, hope I got those names right. And all the physical therapists at Boy Show who keep these legs moving, honey. I am most grateful to be walking this morning because somebody somewhere is in a wheelchair, in a bed, or just need help walking. So give thanks for the little that you do have so that it will increase. As we inhale deeply. Sending more love, light, and energy down through the legs and the ankles and the arch and the toes. Yeah, feel free to wiggle those toes and send that energy right back up through the toes and the feet and the ankles and the arches as we continue to breathe in. <sighs> Bringing that energy back up through the legs and the knees and the thighs and the hips as we continue to breathe in. And as we continue to blow it out, as we breathe in, bringing that energy up from the sides and through the arms as we stretch and stretch and stretch and give thanks for the power of the stretch. As we breathe in, sending the energy all the way back up to the top of the head. And as we exhale, bend your head forward, blow it out and head up, inhale deeply. Hold it. And this time when you let it out, bring your head forward, chin to chest, and slowly rotate that head to the left. Slowly, slowly, slow down. You're moving too fast. Slowly bring it around to the back. Slowly over to the right. Slowly feel that stretch in that. Bring the head back. Head up. Inhale deeply. And as you exhale, bring the head back down, chin to chest, and slowly rotate the head to the right. Slowly. Slowly, slowly to the left, and slowly bring it back around to the right. Head up, inhale deeply. And as you exhale, look to the left as far as you possibly can, feeling the stretch in the right side of the neck. And bring the head back center. Inhale deeply. Hold it. And as you exhale, turn your head to the right as far as you possibly can and feeling a stretch in the left side of the neck. Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? Uh-huh, yeah. And bring the head back around. Inhale. And exhale. As we give thanks for the power of the breath, we know that we are always at the right place at the right time, continuing to breathe in and breathing out. We arm ourselves with the power of the breath because it is the breath that will keep us in times of chaos and confusion. We give thanks that we are in an environment that is safe and sound, and we can practice this breathing exercise to prepare ourselves for the day. You simply break. You don't have to spend five minutes or 10 minutes. You can spend two minutes, but you must do deep breathing. Because when you breathe in and breathe out, as Dr. Maya Angelou, the late poet, author, film, actress, director, would say, before you face the day, face God. Face the universal spirit that is within you, that guides you and guards you and protects you. And it's all done with the beginning, the power breath. As we breathe in, we give thanks for this exercise, this mindfulness exercise, Monday morning mindfulness that will keep us safe and sound when we are approached with negativity and chaos and confusion. And all we have to do is remember to what? Breathe in. And when you exhale, blow it out through your, your mouth. <sighs> if you got a little funk on your breath, a little stank, you forgot to brush your teeth. <laughs> I promise you. 
they will move away. They will move way back. Yeah, they'll move back. And that's something that you could try on your own. You can go to my Instagram page, Zelda Speaks, or Zelda Speaks, the number two, and the letter U. And I also got another one too. Don't ask me how that happened. It's a Zelda Speaks, the number two, and M E. Okay, so you can check that thing out. But anyway, thank you so much for sharing this and share it with somebody because we all know somebody who knows somebody who's stressed out on, during the day. And during the course of the day, we probably get a little upset, blood pressure get high, and we don't think to drink water. Mm -mm. Well, I'm, I'm stressed. Why would I drink some water? Drink some, take a deep breath. They're going to look at you like you're crazy, but that's okay. And drink some water. And I am to inform you that, ladies and gentlemen, you have just entered the happiness gym zone. You know why? Because your brain has activated the happiness genes within you. And look at you breathing all on your own, looking good and smiling this morning. Now kiss yourself, in the words of Mike Apple. Kiss yourself. Mwah, mwah. Yes. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for having that experience with me this morning. It is 726. Oh, let us see uh, more comments here. You, Susani says, you look lovely. Thank you, my sister. I'm only a reflection of you. And she says, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Jody Susan, who's on Tuesday morning. And Jody is the lady who, my sister, my sister from another mister, who uh, introduced me to my trade hardest and um, Lance Curse. And they'll be coming on very shortly after the 7.30 break. Grand Rising, Sistar, breathing with you this a.m. Yes, Soul Purpose Healing Fiat. If you didn't hear the show last night, every Sunday night at 7 till 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, you got to go back and hear uh, the story, the story, the show on transgender, transphobia, and uh, fascism. You got to see, because it gives you insight into all the nonsense, the craziness that's going on in the world. So I had to share that with you. So Grand Rising, and thank you so much for being a part of Monday Morning Mindfulness, where we do our very best to give you that which you need for uh, the show. And uh, coming up shortly, we will be uh, joined by them. And be sure and tune in tomorrow morning for self sale care with Jody Susan. Now, before I go to break, let me very quickly share with you what's going on with the Homeless Project. And for those of you who don't know, um, I work with an organization called the Higher Learning Network TV show. Well, I think you know that. I produce that uh, show, which airs Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 on Channel 19. And our mission, uh, my little brother, Douglas Robinson, was um, murdered February 19, 2017. And all of these people showed up at his funeral, and I was simply overwhelmed. And I have never seen that. I didn't know that there were that many homeless people. And then I come to find out about this, and I was like, oh, my goodness. So this is our Instagram page. You see right here, hln.homeless. Dot project and when you go there you will see some of the videos of um, the work that we do here and thank you for your votes for choosing us as your charity so there's lots of information I'm not gonna play it you can go there and see it yourself but I just wanted to share that with you and coming up it is time for our first break and we are going to when we come back we will have the um, our guest Montre Hardage and Lance Curse, former NFL players who are changing the game. So stay close and we'll be back. The Female Solution Global Radio TV Show invites you to an invigorating conversation with our team of hosts Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Time. Start your week with Monday Morning Mindfulness with Zelda Speaks. Tuesdays, self sell care with Jody Susan. Wednesdays, repairing broken families with Naima Latif and co host Kareem Hamid. Thursdays, soulful solutions with Dr. Debbie Green. And Fridays, health and well being with Viata. Saturdays, tune in 12 noon to 2 p.m. Central Time. First Saturday, success strategies with Jana. Second Saturday, Wendy Williams Esquire on relationships. Third Saturday, move around with Deborah. And fourth Saturday, wisdom with Mama D. 
Join us Sundays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time for Soul Purpose Healing with Beata. Call in and comment 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak to the host and be a part of the solution. Why can't I hear her? thousand nutritional products and they are shipped direct to your door. Because Insan Essentials is certified in plant-based healing, we're committed to offer you the best nutritional supplements on the planet. They're non-GMO and sustainably produced. And we take the guesswork out for you. Let Tucson Essentials help you take control of your health today. We all say we would like to be wealthy, but wealth isn't determined by how much money you have. Wealth is determined by your power to define what money is. The dictionary defines money as something used as a way to pay for goods and services and to pay people for their work. So how would you like to have access to an unlimited source of money? Money that is not taxed by the government. Money that increases as you share the opportunity with others. Money that you can use to pay for goods and services and pay people for their work. I'm talking about Bitcoin. It's the future of independent wealth building. Bitcoin is the new money that you control. Get started building your wealth. Call 312-849-3456. That's 312-849-3456. Are you grieving the loss of your life? Let me try to restore serenity to your life. As serenity family social services, we understand that good mental health is the result of emotional well-being. Our goal is to push you and your family in relieving emotional distress and restoring harmony and balance to the lives. We offer individual, couples, and family counseling. I'm Hyrule Lewis, CEO of Serenity Family Social Services. Call us today, 312 315 Do you want to live in a world without war? Join our global peace movement. Have we called to world peace and restoration of the light? Transcend culture? ideology, and other boundaries to achieve a peaceful harmony in the global society. Each community now is committed to bringing world peace and cessation of war through peaceful dialogue between religious groups. I am Director Shinsu Kim of HWP of Chicago Branch of North America. Join us for our next gathering. Call 773 580 do you have a product or service? Take your business global and get new customers from around the world. Advertise on the Female Solution Radio Show. You may have a great product. You may even have a fantastic website. But how do you let people know you exist? Tell them. Promote your business on one of the most dynamic shows on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution. You'll reach an enthusiastic audience of more than 100,000 loyal daily listeners with a specially designed 30-second ad that will drive customers directly to your website. We'll send you statistics as tracked by Blog Talk Radio 
to let you know the numbers and demographics of those hearing your advertisement. Your ad will run during the live two-hour morning show from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, and it will be heard all day long by listeners who listen to the archive show. You will reach our worldwide audience on their laptop, iPod, iPads, and cell phones. Watch the orders for your product or service increase. Just go to our website, www.naimalatif.com. That's www.naimahlatif.com. Click on the radio advertising page. Send us your words. We'll create a 30-second radio ad and watch your business increase worldwide. Okay, and we are back with the show. Thank you so much for joining us back here on The Female Solution. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks. And welcome back to Monday Morning Mindfulness. We are joined this morning with Montre Carter and Lance Cursing, two NFL, former NFL players who are changing the game of football and they are live here with us on the female solution grand rising mantra and lance thank you so much for joining us here this morning how you doing good morning it's a pleasure to be here it's a pleasure to have you here hi lance thank you for joining us too uh -huh. and we know that uh, mantra has to leave early so we're going to uh, get him on here so that he can be on his way i don't want you late for your meeting and say and monday morning mindful is causing no we did not so let me tell you a little bit about it before he has to go <laughs> montre hardage former nfl player with the miami dolphins yay miami which i was there with you and the new york giants and he's right here from Chicago, Northwestern University. How about that? And sickle cell trait. Now, I got to talk to you all about that because both of you all mentioned that in your bios, and I'm a sickle cell, and I never think about it. So, yeah, we got to talk about that. And he's from Cordell, Georgia. Is that right, uh, Montre? That's correct. Never heard of uh, Cordell. Where is that near? Is that anywhere near Atlanta? It's like two hours south of Atlanta. Two hours south. Yeah. Okay. Um, Middle of nowhere. <laughs> not that I would know any difference, but, yeah, uh, I, I get the juice. And Lance. A former Spanish pro uh, basketball player, B ball. I did not know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, business management degree. All right, now that's what I'm talking about. Sickle cell <laughs> trade survivor and from Fort Myers, Florida. Mm -hmm. Please welcome them to the show today. Montre Hardin <laughs> and Lance Kirst. They are changing the game of the NFL. Now, I got to know. How is it that you two met? Oh, shout out to Jody Susan, who arranged this for us to be here this morning. Jody Susan, you've been on her show. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Jody Susan says, ah, she says, Fagala was cooling to your meditation. Oh, that's cute. That's my girl, Fagala. And hi, Montre, uh, Montre and Lance. Good morning, gents. Thank you so much for joining us. Here this one. Okay, so tell us how you got how you how did you guys meet each other? Yeah, it was um pretty I, it was in 2020, 2020, uh during the pandemic, and um basically learned about uh this market down in Coconut Grove, organic uh vegan market, and just really shopping around um and came across um some sea moss. And you know, initially I had heard of it, but wasn't really you know, didn't know too much about it. And then, you know, met Lance and we kind of just had a click initially. Um, found out that, you know, at the market. Correct. Oh, so wow. he, was a, he was a vendor at the market oh. and he had his whole setup going and he was, you know, basically kind of just, you know, providing information for everyone in terms of um, nutrition, health, you know, CMOS. And, you know, for me trying to learn about it because I'm more of a health enthusiast myself. And going back to New York, I was with New York at the time. I'm trying to find different ways so I can hack my environment um, during the winters and et cetera. So we start, you know, talking and uh, realizing that we had a lot of things in common. Uh, we both played professionally, um, both had sickle cell trait. And then and just talking about our experiences with the sickle cell trait and then how we we're able to um, use things that are more conducive towards our health, um, such as, you know, eating the right things, cutting back on the processed sugars and et cetera. And then from then on, uh, we kind of just created a brotherhood, stayed in contact. You know, I would buy CMOS from him 
and then visit during my off seasons. And then whenever I came back um, during the summers, kind of just had an opportunity to really uh, build a relationship. And then from then on, it's just became, it was just remained super organic. And then we started doing business. Okay. Now I got to ask about this sickle cell trait because both yep. of you mentioned that in your bio. I was, I forgot I even had, sick, no, I don't have sickle cell. I forgot I had the trait. Why is that so important? Because I know both of you mentioned that in your bio. So why is that important? Personally, for me, uh, and a lot of athletes that I've seen uh, in my uh, proximity of playing ball and even basketball players. Um, but first and foremost, for the athletes that I've been around at Northwestern, I think we had at least three to four players that had sickle cell trait. And initially for me, it I wasn't really exposed to the symptoms until I got to college when I started to do a lot more aerobic activities you know, you're working out every day and your body has to recover. Um, and so realizing and conditioning the, the tempo of that increase. And so now I'm really seeing my body go into this inflammation periods of, you know, oxidation stress. And like, you know, I'm maybe my, my muscles are a lot more sore than the regular uh, or just my other counterparts on the team. And then realizing that it had a lot to do with oxygen deprived, you know, cells that your body basically um, goes into after a certain type of condition, whether it's strenuous workouts, whether even a long day of just doing homework, a long day of just doing counter, you know, just things in life, your body has to take a lot more time to, re, you know, recover. And so with my experience with it, I started realizing that it has an impact. There's sometimes there, it impedes my progress on performance. And I have to realize when I need to take a step back and actually get some rest and rest hard. So for me, it's... Uh, mm. It's a very common thing and a lot of, you know, organizations who have a lot of money, such as the NCAA and NFL, they take this into account. Like, hey, if you have sickle cell, hey, we have a strategic plan for you now. And I think this has been set, um, you know, maybe I can only say probably five years ago because I've only was in the league three years. And so hearing the nutritionists, hearing the trainers talk about these new programs that they're setting, because a lot of athletes who are prime time, legit First, first rounders have this these traits, and they have, really? they have to make sure they can protect their money. And so now these things are actually in the foundation now, and because if you can't protect the players, wow, you know, absolutely, that's eye opening for me. I didn't know they cared. <laughs> when it affects their money, when it affects the bottom line, yeah. the top ten pick, yeah, absolutely, yeah. it's it's your top thirty pick. I'm giving you, I'm guaranteeing you. Ten million dollars. Of course, I'm gonna put a plan into place. And okay. If you have a, if you're a vet and you're a person who they need and you're a leader, of course they're gonna make sure. You know, a lot of times back in the day it was unknown information and knowledge, but now they're, they're the science is getting a lot more in depth about wow. how you know these things are impeding a lot of players and causing a lot of etc. Heart attacks or you know cardiovascular type of situations. And you know, I had had a friend personally. He went blind. Uh, had a had a um, sickle cell crisis, uh, went blind for a minute, almost lost his kid. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness! And just had the trait, and just had the trait. Didn't wasn't didn't have the the disease, but it, it triggered. Wow, was that your experience too, Lance? Yeah, very similar. Yeah, I didn't go blind though. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it wasn't that bad, but uh, yeah. So sickle cell trait is not benign. Most people believe that, you know, it shouldn't have any effect on, you know, your body because you don't have the full-blown disease, but that's, that's, it's not, that's far from the truth, right? Because you can still have complications. Mm. One trade was saying, um, you know, when you're going through rigorous activity, when you're dehydrated, high elevation, when you're sick, yeah, like if me and Montre get sick, it may last a couple of days longer than if you were to get sick. Well, not you, but somebody without sickle cell trait could get sick. Right. Or hypothetically, if we were to drink alcohol and then, you know, it may take us a few more days to sober up than the other person or we'll have lingering effects from it. It's just that our bodies have to be at optimal at all times. Like we can't play around with, you know, not knowing we have to be structured. Everything has to be in order. Our eating patterns, our sleeping patterns, uh, like Montre said, was saying in the recovery, that's number one, because our body takes such a beating. We have to recover. We have to get out of that cortisol state, that stress state, and get back into that compensation state as fast as possible. 
because what will happen is with sickle cell trait, since you're since it's taking a toll on you, you can be in a constant state of of, of stress or depletion. All right. So instead of, you know, your body coming back to homeostasis, you're in a constant stress state and it's hard to get to that recovery phase back to the, the equilibrium or the homeostasis. So you never get into the supercompensation phase. So we're just trying to get out of that because everyone's going to get stressed no matter what. That's just life. Right. Mm -hmm. Avoid that. But how do you come back up out of that stress into the recovery phase? So it's mm -hmm. a recovery phase, compensation phase. And we we. If you don't know, you can always be stuck in a stress phase and you never recover. Wow. Yeah. You can, I never heard anybody say that, that you can, you can be, stay stuck in the stress phase. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are walking around stuck in the stress. Wow. I never thought about when it. Chronic like stress is, I don't care if you're eating the best diet, you know, I don't care if you're, if you have the best mindset, yeah, you're going to. If, if, if you don't learn how to control your stress, you know, even from with the right mindset or and with the diet, just putting all those pieces together, then you, you're going to you're going to get sick. I don't care what it is. You're going to develop some type of something. Mm. So how is it that. What role, I should say, does the sea moss play in this and, and how does this. I, well, I know you met at the market, but. <laughs> What brought you all together to say, well, you know, there's some hot things going on here and there's some hot things going on. How did you choose CMOS? Um, CMOS is, it was a, you know, I'm Jamaican. It's from Jamaica. I have my Jamaican shirt on today. All right now, you Ivory Man. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, to to there. I'm supposed to go there for my 65th birthday with my girlfriend, but she was sick and was like, I'm, I'm not going to be bothered with this shot and all of this. So, I never did it. So, you as close as I get to it right by now. Yeah, you guys missed out. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, sea moss is one of those staple uh, herbs that we, you drink and consume in Jamaica. Um, you know, I didn't grow up in Jamaica, but I grew up around a bunch of Jamaicans. So I was exposed to it at a, at a young age. Uh, after I stopped playing basketball in Spain, uh, I started um, getting people back into it. And then I started, I started providing it. Pandemic comes around and then that's, the hottest thing in the world. So I happened to I happened to jump in just before the pandemic. Like oh, I, I, really now? Yeah, yeah. Before the pandemic. So when the, when the pandemic came around, it was popping, and I was like, "Wow, <laughs> like, like what is going on?" Like, I, I overnight, it was like an overnight sensation. But for for me, for most people, but for me, it was it was for a while because I've I've known about it, I've seen it. All right. And then, um, you know, we just we were like, OK, let's do something. Let's provide this to everybody. Put it in a, a simple, easy, like an easy herbal. We see the name. Put it in a simple, easy way to consume it. Make it easy. We're the only ones to provide six grams of sea moss per serving um, in a drinkable form. We have the most, you know, I, I think we perfected the, the, the way of consuming it to the degree that no one has. Uh, this is cutting edge. We're ahead of everyone in this race. You know, we're just trying to explain to people how, how easy and, and, and applicable it is to life. Because, you know, when you have the gel, a lot of people, they're, they're having to put it in the fridge and then expire. But when you put it in a powder form, it doesn't expire as quick. It lasts a, a bit longer. So if you were to go through an apocalypse, you want to you powder everything down, dehydrate a bunch of stuff. So this, this, this would be the best food for an apocalypse. <laughs> Absolute best food. <laughs> I am so glad you said that because I never knew until I went to your site, which is easy, easyherbal.com. And I'm going to post that up there in a minute, but I want people to see this. Sea moss, you need five reasons why you need sea moss in your diet. Number one, high in natural collagen, skin, hair, and nail support. And with all the nails going around and so many issues uh, in the in our community, I, I, I'm I'm so glad to hear that because I didn't know that. Mm. I knew about the the minerals and the the vitamins and all the other things, but I didn't know about this. But I have to ask this question: I did not know that it could come in a powder form. You see, because my sister introduced it to me about five years ago, just before the craze even hit like you all were. And yeah. I make it myself, but I didn't know that it came in a powder form. 
So yeah. what makes the powder form superior to the, the gel that you keep in the refrigerator? That's, a, that's an amazing question. So, so the way science works, it's, you know, you have you know, a liquid, a gas, a solid, right? So almost everything can be, almost everything can go in those three forms, liquid, gas, solid. Uh, the solid sea moss, you could, you could soak it to put it into a liquid, liquid, liquid form. So you take uh -huh. the solid, gel, liquid. But what you can also do is uh, take it in its dehydrated state, the solid state, and just powder it down. You put it through a, a pulverizer and you and you grind it down and it becomes a fine powder. That's it. So oh. it's, it's it is it is the exact same thing as the gel, but just in a powder form. So when you change the the form, now it doesn't have moisture to it. Whenever you add moisture to something, it starts to get old faster. Right? It starts to increase. It, it accelerates the the particle, so it, it decays quick. In a powder dried state, where because sea moss is already dry. Um, you can last, that can last forever. So it's, it's superior because it's convenient. Uh, it's a flavored powder as well, uh, because a lot of people don't like the taste of sea moss. Yeah, buddy, because it doesn't, it, it has no taste. It does, it, it's, I was excited when I said, oh, purple lemonade. Oh, yeah, everybody likes lemonade. Yeah. I love it. It is, it's extremely potent. Uh, it hits your blood just as fast as the gel, actually, probably faster. Faster. Um, is it because it's pulverized? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's pulverized in that fine state. Um, <clears throat> it says you launch healthy way to hydrate. So can you hydrate just by putting it in in water? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. You so if you were stranded on an island somewhere and shake it up. Yeah. Mix it up. So if you were stranded on an island or anywhere at the airport, couldn't get any get any food, you could take this and survive a day. Absolutely, a lot longer than a day. Yeah. The the Irish the Irish survived the the potato famine on I on sea moss. Uh -huh. Yeah. So a lot longer than a day. You're you're, you're gonna have a lot of uh, amino acids for the protein, a lot of um, minerals for for hydration, electrolytes, whatnot. So you can last a lot long. People fast for weeks on sea moss. Yeah, oh, I, I think that's, that's the biggest component uh, that's not talked about with sea moss is the magnesium. That's in, that the magnesium in terms of how it uh, basically how it 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 plays a huge role with the cortisol levels that we were talking about and how magnesium relaxes the nervous system. Mm -hmm. ah. the and you talk about like what that how that helps with cramps, whether it's muscle cramps, whether it's a woman who is PMSing, et cetera, all these different things, because of this magnesium that's in it, it provides the body to get back to a homeostasis. And this is why, you know, sea moss for me and Lance was a no brainer because we saw our bodies really have an impact. And with this powder, I believe that it's more bioavailable just because it hits the bloodstream faster. Um, and it, it doesn't have a lot of water molecules that your body has to break down because it's not going through a different type of uh, conversion in terms of going from a, a solid to a liquid. Um, it just stays in its organic form, and we just chop it up down to the particles where your body can just basically absorb it super easy. So. Oh, my goodness. This is such a learning experience. I love this. See, because... Uh, when I heard you on Jody's show, and then I went back, and um, I don't know why, it just never occurred to me that it would be in a powder form. And I'm and I'm looking at the site, and I was like, "This is powder." Okay, so what is this? So I get because I never knew it came in a powder form. So you know, you live and you learn. So so thank you for that. Is, yeah. What significance? I see the the candles there. What significance does that have? The candle. Yeah. Uh, just to provide light for the setting. Oh, okay. And, yeah, yeah. Okay, and this is the the website ezherbal.com, correct? Yes, correct. Now, you said something very important about the stress because stress is killing all of us. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I knew because I had a trainer back in the day, and he always said, "Be sure and get you some mag, get as much magnesium in your body as you right. possibly can." I'm like, "What? What, what, do, you, what do you know? And I, you know this the uninformed consciousness thing? What do you know?" It's like he's a trainer, duh. But 
I noticed a shift in the way I felt. And it's like you you feel these things. Sometimes you feel them and sometimes you don't. But the body will respond differently when you have the kind of nutrition in your body to help you to continue being a healthy person. And most of us are not. Well, I shouldn't say most of us. Many of us are not on that journey. So how does one become accustomed to taking herbal supplement, supplements they never even heard of before? How does that work? What do you suggest? Well, well from just, so the thing is, is, is all of life is based on psychology, right? It's, it's how do you understand your way of living? You know, if you, if you don't understand that food causes disease, stress causes disease, the lack of exercise causes disease, the lack of sleep causes disease, not getting enough water causes disease, right? If you don't understand, you know, how the human body works, well, well, then it's going to be hard to, you know, get people to understand. CMOS is, is part of that diet piece that mm. causes disease. So this is something that's extremely high, extremely potent to, to complement your body for it to do its thing, right? Because mm. once, once you affect one part of that equation, which I call it, you know, the seven natural doctors, once mm. you affect one part of that equation, the rest of them take effect to some degree, right? So if I master my diet, well, maybe my mind changes, so my stress changes because the gut controls 95% of serotonin. So CMOS has properties that are going to help, you know, get rid of a lot of that inflammation in the gut. So now my, my mind will start acting different because the body and the mind is connected. So everything is all connected. So um, we live in an era now where, you know, people are afraid to take mango off a tree because it needs to have scientific backing and if it's safe to eat, right? But when, when, when your grandmother or your mother was living, right, they, that's all they ate was stuff outside. They didn't have to go to a farm. They went to someone else's yard or whatever and they ate it. Uh, but, but our environment, well, we put all the trust in the medical system where, where we, we feel like they know or the food, the food, drug, the food drug administration, whatever, that, that they know and it's like, well, Anyone who has a monopoly on health or anyone who has a monopoly on knowledge, you kind of want to take that with a grain of salt because it's like yeah. they're trying to control you to do certain things because yeah. if, if someone really wanted to you know, give you something, they say, hey, there's a thousand different herbs, choose one. Right. There's a hundred million different herbs, choose one. You know, we're, we're basically providing one of, the, one of the most powerful herbs since 2020 in the whole U.S., in the and whole it's world. black man doing it. That's what I'm talking about. It's <laughs> brothers doing it. I have learned. I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm just so no, you're good. You're good. Now cut me off whenever you want. Because <laughs> brothers have been dogs since day one. And now the word is out. Montre, I know you got about a minute or so because you got a meeting and you, you got to go to. Give us your final word. But I just had to say that before you left because I wanted you to know how excited I am <laughs> that you are doing this. Go ahead, uh, Montre. Definitely. No, I definitely appreciate the time. I, I think, you know, that question you, you just mentioned about, you know, what does it take to kind of make that next step into the right decision, whether it's herbs, whether it's just healthy living. I think whatever you do, you have to become a philosopher of it. Um, you have to study it. You have to believe it. You have to consume it. And you have to become it. And, um, you know, all these different things we talk about, you know, it has to start with routine. I believe successful people are biased people. You know, they have standards. You know, if there is a way that how we had to become to be professionals, we had a biased way of looking at life. Hey, this is what we need to do. This is how it needs to be done. And these are the people in the support system that we need in order to go into the weight room, in order to go in our classroom, in order to go into a facility or an arena and actually compete and be great. And so having this strategic mindset in terms of how to implement a certain process or a service, you need biases. You go into organizations, there's a culture, there's a model, what we stand on. And a lot of people have to get back to the foundation and try to figure out what they're philosophers of so you can create that in your household. Like, you know, you go to a certain household, you can tell the energy. There's a certain foundation. There's yeah. a certain way to live there. There are certain rules or cer certain social norms when you go to different countries. There's a certain way of doing things, and that's a bias. And it's not necessarily negative. It's just a way of living. If it suits you and is very, it's very conducive towards your living and it provides you with the amazing well-being, 
becoming more spiritual, becoming more connected with earth, becoming more in tune with honing in on your skills, that's the way you should go. If it's something that's convenient, peer pressure based, you know you're not living your true intent and essence of who you're made out of. And just become a philosopher of what you want in life. And if it's something that's providing with value, whether it's money, love, support, understanding, respect, growth, whether it's muscle, whether it's mind, whether it's spiritually, whether it's emotional, it's all, that, that's just how I look at it. And it's just like, we got to really tap in and, and do that work. So we got to study whatever, whatever we want to become, just like Lance did, just like I've become and just like you have become. You, we study the things that we believe. And so I think it starts with Ashley sitting down, doing the research, figuring out what are the pros and the cons, figuring out does this really align with me and go on from there. You hit the nail on the head and Jody Susan of Susan Essential says, yes, we need to reprogram the old belief systems and choose ones that feed our soul. Thank you so very much, Jody. And thank you so much, uh, Montre Hardage. Uh, who phenomenal entrepreneurship, a, a, a phenomenal businessman. Please go to easyherbal.com and check it out. And I tell you, if you want to feel good, you want to look good, CMOS is the answer. I found that out the hard way. I mean, it wasn't the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all about that. So thank you, uh, Montre. Thank you so very much. Sure. Uh, I know you've got a meeting to go to, and sure. we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Look forward to having you all, you guys, I, you guys on again in the future. Sounds thank you. Thank you. And but don't you're not leaving, are you, um, Lance? I'm here. Oh, okay, good. I'm here. Uh, it is 801. We are going to take our next commercial break and you stay close and we will be right back. And we're gonna chat some more with Lance Curse of easyherbal.com. So you need to go somewhere, not somewhere, but go and uh text somebody and let them know. <laughs> that the game has been changed. The game changers are on the Higher Learning Network TV show, which airs Tuesdays at six, Wednesdays at one on Channel 19. Stay close and we'll be right back. I'm here. Are you stressed out? Something's Are you crazy? Just happened. Why am? Why are not my promos not playing? The Female Solution Global Radio TV Show invites you to an invigorating conversation with our team of hosts Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Time. Start your week with Monday Morning Mindfulness with Zelda Speaks. Tuesdays, self sell Care with Jody Susan. Wednesdays, Repairing Broken Families with Naima Latif and co-host Kareem Hamid. Thursdays, Soulful Solutions with Dr. Debbie Green. And Fridays, Health and Wellbeing with Viata. Saturdays, tune in 12 noon to 2 p.m. Central Time. First Saturday, Success Strategies with Jana. Second Saturday, Wendy Williams Esquire on Relationships. Third Saturday, Move Around with Deborah. And fourth Saturday, Wisdom with Mama D. Join us Sundays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time for Soul Purpose Healing with Viata. Call in and comment 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak to the host and be a part of the solution. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to? Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing.
Okay, Lance, I'm live. There you are. I had to pull my phone up. I don't know what happened. The internet just left. Can you hear me, Lance? I can hear you. Okay, I don't know. I have no idea. I guess I, guess I got too happy. Somebody ain't, ain't too happy about these brothers uh, bringing some light to the world. That's all I can say. <laughs> Naima said, girl, use your cell phone. I was like, oh, what was I thinking? Anyway, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Uh, Lance... While there are tech issues, please share about your product. Oh, that's what she was saying. Yeah, well, well, you may as well. You got the floor. Take it away, Lance. Oh, yeah. yeah. So our product, uh, Easy Herbal, it's uh, the first of its kind. It's a powdered flavored sea moss. It's, 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 it's flying off the shelves right now. We have to re-up pretty soon. <laughs> we, um, I mean, we, we've had fun with this one. You know, we've taken something that everyone loves now. It's a house. Sea moss is a household herb that everyone loves just like a matcha or a, a green tea or something like that you know it's the same thing now on the same level mm-hmm. um tastes good tastes great it's a uh, majority it's like 85 percent sea moss it's 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 amazing it's <laughs> i'm just happy i'm happy that we created something that's that's so popular so it's 85 percent uh 85 percent sea moss what's the mm-hmm. other 15 percent monk fruit and lemon say monk, that again monk do you know what monk fruit is yes jody hit me to uh yeah. monk fruit went out yeah. to her house in gray's lake of palatine i think it was palatine yeah and she said girl go get you some monk fruit you don't have to eat that. i'm like monk fruit go to costco that's where I, I was like oh okay i'm sorry i digress go ahead <laughs> so we have, we, have, we have we have sea moss monk fruit lemon flavor and um, you know that monk fruit is for that is for that sweetener because you know we live in an age of where people want sweetness, so it, yes. is, it is what it is. You know we didn't put any any we didn't put any much flavor in it. We so if you want, you can add more flavor, more lemon or lime to it. You can squeeze it just like regular sea moss. Uh, but it's it's an alkaline product, right? Because alkaline is above seven point two five or three five. It's far above that. Okay, now for people who don't have a clue, explain what alkaline means to the body. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, everything is theory, and the theory goes is that, you know, disease can't live in an acidic environment, in, a, in an oxygenated environment. It, it can only thrive in an acidic environment. So the blood pH is 7.25 or 7.35. Uh, anything below that, it's an acidic environment. Anything above it, it's an oxygenated environment. So um, basically getting your body the highest quality of food so your body doesn't have to do work to to get you back to that, that homeostasis. Mm. And <clears throat> I've also heard that if you take lemon, if you don't have alkaline water, because not everybody can afford to have an alkaline machine or have alkaline or purchase alkaline water, that if you sprinkle, sprinkle, if you cut a lemon in half and, and squeeze that lemon in the water first thing in the morning, that makes it alkaline. Yeah, yeah. So lemon is a is an alkaline. Oh, well, lime. Typically, lime is, is more uh, alkaline than lemon. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah, you can you can put that any 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 of those things but t- keep in mind it's what type of water is it you know if it's, it's this tap water from you know if you're in flint michigan i don't think you can put anything in there right? mm-hmm. so you, have, you, have, you have to be considerate you know typically you want some spring water or let's say if you were to like boil some water or whatnot boil it down sterilize it or if you or if you put water in a glass jar and leave it outside for about six hours it'll it'll purify it as well um because the sun does that as well. So I'm so glad you said that. Sit sit the water outside in the sun for how many hours? They say about six hours. Uh, you know, typically in the middle of the summer. Mm-hmm. Six hours, it'll, it'll sterilize it, it'll it'll clean that water up. That's what my aunt and Edna used to do. See, a lot of people don't know this, but I picked cotton back in the day. I know. Ah, where are you from? I'm born in Chicago, but when I was nine, my mom passed and I was sent south to live with an aunt who was a sharecropper. Yep. And in order for you to eat, you had to chop some cotton. Yep. So I know everybody think Michael Jackson originated the glove, but honey, I originated the glove. Uh-huh. My hands were so bruised, I would not wear, I would only, I would wear glasses, glasses, gloves.
man till he left. So I am not a fan of 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 hard work, but uh, I've done the hard work. But getting back to the water, I digress. I do that all the time. Yeah, uh, not many people know about sharecropping, though. Yeah, excuse me. Not many people know about sharecropping. No, they think everything comes out of vending machine, come from the store. They don't know somebody had to do back breaking labor in order to um, to make that shirt, to make that yeah, cow. To make, to make Cause let me tell you, <laughs> for a very long time, I would not wear cotton. I didn't want anything. I don't want no parts of cotton around me. My they grandmother was a sharecropper them. too. Say that again. My grandmother was a sharecropper too. So. So sure, your grandma no, baby, and sitting that part of water outside all day, we were just fine. We had no health problems, none. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yeah. So the fact that you have come along, I've been watching these uh, YouTube videos, and it talks about how people of Afro anything are, are not recognized. I've been watching the video called Afro Argentinians, how they are not in was it in Argentina and Nicaragua, how they are not acknowledged and they talk about sharecropping back in their doors. And I was like, wow, Argentinians did sharecropping to everybody. If you were this color, you did some kind of slave labor. Do you do you know about slavery in Argentina? From YouTube, that's all I know. They, they killed YouTube. the majority of their slaves after after the, the abolishment of slavery. That's what the lady said. Yeah. I was like, oh, 99 percent of them they killed. I was like, oh my goodness, no, I did not. Oh, I got it back up here. So yeah. I'm gonna have to take, I can cut this off. I can cut right. off because it's about to blow up. Ah, <laughs> there we go. There you uh, go. We are back. Oh, Lord, this phone is hot as the day is long. Why is it so hot? <laughs> okay, come out of it. That's all that matters. But you said the Argentinians were killing their slaves. I had no idea. I should have known. They killed ninety nine percent of their slaves after I think I guess, I think they put them in a plane and dropped them out of the plane or something like that. They did some. Oh wow! I did not. Weird, know weird that. To them. Yeah, yeah, it was strange. They did some strangeness to them. Yeah, so that's why you go to Argentina. There's no there's no African Americans there, no African South Americans. Whatever. You want to call it. Uh, Deborah Smith says blessings when setting the water outside. Should it be in a clear glass container only? Yeah, you don't want to put Isn't plastic. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want plastic in anything. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or some copper, right? They, they used to well, put it in copper. Copper, right? They'll put it inside yeah. the copper and let it. I got copper. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to try that one day. I'm not going to try it. Yeah. I am going to do it. Uh, uh, Jody from Susan Essential says that is a myth. Everyone can afford alkaline water. Okay. My water system is cheaper than bottled water and bottled water. You just may as well go throw your money down the toilet. Uh, mm -hmm. And when you take the toxins out, the water naturally shifts from acidic to alkaline. Thank you for that, Jody. Everybody can afford alkaline. If you can afford to go buy expensive bottled water, yeah, you don't uh -huh. need a water system. People are buying more and more expensive things than that on the daily. Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> Uh, Jody says, "Glad you're back. Yeah, we're glad to be back too. I don't know what that was about. I gave, I guess, I gave uh, the brothers too much praise, and they didn't want to hear that this early in the morning. They want to be bothered with that, but they gonna be bothered with it because it is imperative that we know that we have this kind of information because not everybody know. They know all about the the stuff coming in the little plastic tubes that you squirt it out and eat. We know about all the junk food. We need to know about E Z." herbal.com and now that uh, i've got the internet back up i'm gonna let you talk about it a little bit more while i pull it back up yeah so uh so easy herbal is one of those products that i wanted to create for myself when i played sports because i needed something i almost lost my kidneys twice right i was playing college basketball yeah i was playing college basketball and um mineral deficient i wasn't sleeping at night i was doing, like i wasn't i wasn't drinking at that time Right, I had never drank up until like a eight mineral deficiency. Yeah, mineral Did you deficiency can cause you to have sleepless nights. Of course. Wow, I did of not course. know. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so, so that uh, you know, rigorous activity. We were practicing in a gym that was 15 degrees hotter inside than it was outside. Oh. Uh, of Richmond, Virginia in the summer. So it was 90 outside, 105 inside, no circulation through it. I cramp up, go to the hospital. 
high muscle breakdown levels. I went through a, a period of uh, rhabdomyolysis. That's what they call it. And it's a rapid muscle breakdown. So my kidneys couldn't filter out my filter out that breakdown of muscle. And I, I needed something. I needed something that was going to allow me to play. I needed something. And I wish I had it at the time. It wasn't there. So so basically, we're create, I'm creating everything that I wish I would have had. Not saying that everyone has sickle cell trait, but everyone does oh. become mineral rich. People do become dehydrated. People do um, you know, have certain things wrong with them where if that's wrong with me as a, as a person with sickle cell trait, it's exacerbated to like a level 10 if it's supposed to be a level three, right? So, so basically, I'm taking everyone's issues because I have those issues too, but they just appear much worse in me, right? So I'm taking everyone's wow. issues and trying to solve it one by one. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea. So you are a living, walking, talking testimony of what sea moss can do for you. Because it, it still amazes me five, two, three, four, five years later. People still don't know what sea moss is like. Huh? What's that? What am I going to do with that? Is it going to help my skin? Yeah, it helps every part of your face, your teeth, your feet, your, everything. It's like yeah. you can bathe in. I do mask. Uh, um, yeah. I do mask sometimes mm -hmm. because there's this whole thing about, you know, the skin and the collagen and elasticity. Can you explain that? Yeah. So um, so if you've never heard this, this, this phrase, but uh, the skin is a mouth. Right. We, we think that we think that we only consume things through our mouth, but we also consume through our skin. Mm. Right? So, mouth, right? so anything that you should that you can put in your body, you should anything you put on top of your body you should be able to put in your body. Ah, I never looked yeah. at it. Anything you put on top of your body, you should be able to put in your body. So those lotions, those commercial lotions that we've been using. If you can't eat it, you can't taste it, you should not be, because the skin is the biggest organ of, of the body. Yep, the skin we is put, the mouth. And can you believe we used to put Crisco and Vaseline on our bodies? We were shining. That. You see us on Easter Sunday, we shining all the way up to the pulpit. You can see us coming at the back door. But we didn't know what that Crisco, that lard, and that Vaseline, made from petroleum jelly, made from gas, petroleum? And there are people who still use that today, and you can't tell them any different. Because unless they have you're a doctor, unless you're a doctor and you have a, a white coat on, they're almost near death. They don't do yeah. anything, they don't change anything at that point. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how do you how do you help a person understand that this skin that we're in that everybody wants, and they're I mean they're tanning beds all over the place. Yeah. This skin is so precious. And what you put on that skin helps the inside of the body. Yeah. How do you how do you, how do you get that cross to a whole nation of people who just don't understand its relevance? How do you do that? Hmm. Uh that that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um me personally, I like to harp on the on that messaging over and over. Uh, but you know, there needs to be some type of skill set when, when doing it right, trying to make an analogy for other things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I that I try to take in consideration is that, you know, when whenever we if you're vitamin D deficient, what does that tell you? That, that means that you have poor skin exposure to the sun. Right, mm. you're vitamin D deficient. It's, it's not saying that there's something wrong with you. It's just saying that you're just not doing something right. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just not doing something right. Uh, so instead of saying you have an issue, just say, hey, you, you know, you have a, a inconsistency with with nature. Right, you, ah. you're, you're, you're moving away from nature or natural, so that means you you're moving towards disease. Because nature and disease is on a spectrum. The opposite, the opposite ends is disease and, and disease and nature. So when you move away from nature, you're closer to disease. That's it's it's on the other end. So trying to paint that picture and letting people know that you must consume nature, you don't neglect nature because nature's gonna neglect you, and then 
leave you out to dry and leave you alone. And then what nature says, what your human body says, is, hey, listen, we're in this together. You're a soul inside of this vessel. You're renting this body. You don't own this body. Mm. Your body is saying, hey, listen, I'm giving you this cough. I'm giving you this ache. I'm giving you this, letting you know, hey, you know, you're not working with us, man. I need you to, you're in control of this suit, but I'm, I'm your suit trying to help you do need what you need to do in life, but you're not being a good teammate. Right. I'm giving you all the signs that this hurts, this this pain is here, this sneeze, this cough, this drink, this runny nose. I'm giving you the signs, right? Do something about it. Oh, you're going to ignore it? So, okay, it's like a car. Yeah, you can ignore a car for a while. You can get a new car. You not get a new body. Thank it's just that we, we think that we are our body and we're not our body. This is rented. We gotta give it back one day. Yes, How are you yes. going to have it? So it's it's just me me explaining it from that perspective because we do identify as our, our body, but this is this is not us. Uh, you can say whatever you want to. This is this has to go one day. And this and this this body has you know uh, uh, lights on the car telling you, hey, you gotta you gotta change this. This is going this is going low. Mm -hmm. This. That there, go out here, go on a walk, do this. And we say, no, we got technology. And I, I prefer doing the, tech, the technological way of doing it. But the best way to get healthy is to go back to the original way of being healthy. There's no better way of being healthy. I lived in Europe. People walked. Everyone was slim because people walked. Cars created laziness, right? Yeah, it did. Uh, and car is just convenience, right? Anytime you have convenience, you have a bunch of disease. Yeah. Ooh, in, say that again. Yeah. Anytime we have convenience, we have a bunch of disease because it oh. like easy. It you know where when, when the remote control was developed, then now you know you can just press it instead of having to walk to the TV. Or when the right. elevators are created, now you don't walk up the stairs; you take the elevator. So yeah. where you would have yeah. just spent a couple calories doing that. Well, now you got to go to a gym to do, do those calories. But a gym, even though I work out, a gym isn't a natural place to be in. That's not natural. That's not a natural way of, of, of <laughs> going on an elliptical is not natural. A stair climber is not natural. Why yeah. would you go on the sun? Why would you take the elevator in your apartment, but go to the gym and get on the stair climber? <laughs> Why you put my business all in the street, Lance? <laughs> I live on the 48th floor. I'm sorry. I'm not walking up 48th floor. I'm going to the gym. I'm sorry. Go, 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 up, go up 20 and then take the rest of them up, right? Well, you know, <laughs> let me share this with you. Yeah, About yeah. a month ago, um, I, I can't remember what happened, but the elevator stopped. And it's, I was on my way to the gym and the elevator got stuck and it would only go down. It wouldn't come back up. And I think the gym was on the 14th floor. I yeah. said, okay, I'm going to go down and then I'm going to walk back up. I got to the eighth floor and the door was locked. And I was like, I am not walking up another flight of stairs to 14 to see that it is locked too. So I came yeah. back down. But I said all that to say this. I got my workout in that day. How about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you probably felt good, right? It's, yes, it you know. did. I was shocked. Uh, 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 Jody Susan says, um, Lance, I just love how wise you are. Yes, you are. He got that Jamaican <laughs> flavor, man. He, 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 he <laughs> said, Mother Earth fl uh, uh, flowing. He got his mom and dad flowing through him from the island of Jamaica. That's why. Uh, yeah. Soul Purpose Healing says, Love that spectrum analysis. On one end is nature, and the other end we could call. NDD, nature deficit disorder or disease. Yes, 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 yes. yes. yes we spent too much time nature, in, but nature, I learned that from going to see Beyond in Florida. Yeah. I had a I love of I've nature. never heard that terminology, but nature deficit disorder. That's literally what it is. Sickness is nature. You're, you're deficient in nature. We're sitting in a box all day. We need to be yeah. outside in the Out sun. Even if it is just a little talking story. to people, looking at faces, hugging people. Thank you. Right? You're getting the oxytocin by you know being near people, family members. 
in the sun, endorphins, serotonin. You just can't dabble in dopamine all day. Mm-mm. Turn into otherwise, a drug. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, you're going to be crazy. And I'm looking for this last promo to pay, but I am not stopping this show because I don't know what happened with the internet. Uh-huh. And, I, and I still got something rolling here. Uh, let's see if it'll play because it is 8.32. Hold on. If it'll play, it'll play. If not, it's not playing. So I'm not going... Now, I am, I am not on the commercial break, so uh, uh, I don't want to have that problem again. I don't know what happened, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Sorry, I got in the... Okay, that's not it. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, that's one of the reasons why uh, last, was it last March or March before last, I think it was, we went to see Viata in, um, what, I can't remember the name of the city in Florida. Uh, Viata, help me out here. Anyway, uh, that morning we went to do our walk and because I'm in this walking, I've had issues with my body. So it's like, I got to walk every day. It, it, it's not, I don't care where I am, I'm going somewhere and walk. So we're walking down the street and there are just trees everywhere. And it's like the trees were talking to me. It's like, come this way because they went that way. And I went this way. And it's like, I'm following these trees. It's like this energy from the trees. And I didn't know, coming back and did my research on trees. I didn't know that the tree roots go twice as far in the ground as they do above the ground. I am learning so much about trees and getting rid of getting rid of my NDD my nature deficit disorder, because we we wake up in a box, we go in another box, we go get in our car, we go get on the bus, we go to a job or school, and we're in another box all day, and the sun is shining outside, and we're sitting inside all day, and you wonder why you have a headache, you wonder why you have a stomach, you wonder why all these things are wrong with you, because you have no nature in you, you have no sun. People laugh at me when I say, when I come in the house, I put my feet in dirt, because I need to shake off all of that nonsense that was out there in the world to come home and be safe and be silent and feel good. Uh, Alta, there she is. Alta Mott Springs, Florida. I just fell in love with them. I wanted to move down there. My husband was like, uh, oh, we're not moving to Florida there. I was like, okay, you say something. I'm going to find my way back. You wake up, I'm gone. Just know I'm on my way to Florida. <laughs> Uh, love neighborhoods with older trees. Yes, we do. Baba Kwame Sun Horse uh, uh, created NDD. Oh, uh, Kwame Sun Horse created NDD, uh, nature okay. deficit disorder. Um, Never heard Baba of it, but that, but that's that's what it is. It's nature yeah. deficit disorder. Yeah, that's that's why we do the breathing uh, breathing exercise this morning. And I forgot to see if we had uh, calls. Uh, I'm just we, I'm so caught up in the conversation. Uh, 515-605-9325. Press one to speak if you want to. We've got about uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes here <clears throat> on the female solution. And for those who are uh, listening on our social media play, uh, social media place, uh, uh, type in what city uh, that you're watching us from before you go to easyherbal.com. I am simply fascinated by the fact that this is, um, you know how you see, well, you're not a senior, so you may not see that. Seniors have a pill box every day of the week. And in that pill box, uh, each container has about three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pills. I had a girlfriend just passed. She was on eight pills and one of them was for congestive heart failure. And it's like, I've been knowing you for 60 plus years and I didn't know if you were if you wasn't sick, I'd beat you in the bed because I'm supposed to know that I'm your bestie, right? I digress. I say that, but all those pills, if I'm not saying don't take the pills, see you in the grand rising, see you in the cornfield. Who said that? Uh oh, that's uh <laughs> that's Jody from my new home in forest, in the forest, Marietta, Georgia. Um mm-hmm. Viata showed us her new home and I can't wait to get down there because it is huge. It's like we can we can have somewhere to sleep. We can sleep on the floor. We can sleep in the bathroom. We sleep on the back porch. We can sleep under a tree. It is huge. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I digress. What was I talking about, Lance? Pills. Your friend was on pills. She pills. Died from- on the pills. Seven days a week, you got to take so many pills. You can wean the okay, the medical profession will never tell you this to wean yourself off of them, but you 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 can't. 
I don't take anything anymore. I was a diabetic and remember to go to diabeticdonut.com. There's a free download there on how I reverse type two diabetes. And I did that with CMOS and I did that with my detox drink, apple beet, cucumber, lemon, ginger, kale. It's all free. The recipe is right there. So go to diabeticdonut.com. You do not have to have disease in your body. Dr. Sabi said it. Mucus is the first, is the only disease. All the, all the other stuff is just a side effect. Yeah. Uh, Deborah says, I am watching from the south side of Chicago. Thank you, Deborah. And I, uh, Susan, Jody says, I cannot wait to have you all here. Yeah, girl, we can't wait either. I just want to come when it's cold, not, as, not when it's warm in Chicago. It just makes no sense to me to go somewhere warm when it's warm here. We get, what, three good, three good months. I'm not going to say July anymore. August, no, yeah, well, July, August, September. After that, it's cold as Chicago. So that makes a difference. But that sea moss is making, this is what I've noticed. When I on the days that I forget to have it because I like to drink it first thing in the morning because it really fills me up, and days I don't take it, I'm off center. Yeah, and you can feel it in your body. What's your regimen? Um, and yeah. So for for um for me, it's you know I I take CMOS. I take it um you know when I need to right. Uh, mm -hmm. I take it. You know, I know I take a lot after I work out uh, because I'm very mineral deple uh, depleted. Uh, I work out very hard. Um, I wake up, I, I'll probably eat some teff. Um, with, teff is like a porridge, like a grain. Uh, with hey, you have teff. what? Teff. It's a, it's a porridge. T-E-F-F. -F. Is that Jamaican? No, it's Ethiopian. Really? T-E-F? Yeah. Is that like... Um... Is that like grits or oatmeal or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's like a sweet brown grits. Okay. Yeah, like a sweet brown grits. Okay. Uh, very you, high. In do you put do you put butter and stevia and all that stuff in it or what? No, no butter, no butter. I stay away from oils. Uh, very, very, um, very little juice because uh, I like fiber. Fiber does more for the body than than most things. Um, you know, I eat that with some hemp seeds, nuts, um, some coconut shavings or cacao probably, or some cinnamon, um, you know, doctor that thing up, make it look really good. Um, uh, typically before that I'll have some fruit. Like right now I'm eating watermelon. Uh, I'm a big you watermelon. Yeah. I'm a big watermelon guy, especially the white part. Cause it has citrulline for nitric oxide blood flow. Uh, for sickle cell, I need blood flow. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, back up. You went through that way too quick. Say that again. Say that again. Yeah. So the white part of the watermelon it has citrulline. Citrulline is a precursor to arginine, which is a precursor to nitric oxide. The endothelial cells re releases nitric oxide, which dilates the veins so that more blood can flow. So it helps you with blood pressure and just blood flow, period. So with sickle cell, you get a clot. It doesn't clump up and it doesn't, you know... Um, you know, block the passageway for those blood cells. Yeah, so the white part is really good for sickle cell. Uh, people with sickle cell come from the tropics. Watermelon comes from the tropics. Typically, that's how that works, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, something like that, water. Uh, I, I drink sea moss. I drink sarsaparilla, sorrow, blue vervain. Now, I have, a, I have a bunch of different herbs that I drink as well. Um, and we have products coming out with all these other herbs and stuff too. Oh. We, just, we gotta, we gotta slowly, slowly inter, inter, interject it into the, you know, the system. But um, you know, sea moss is possibly sea moss is like Superman, right? You know, you have all these superheroes. Sea moss is Superman. Let's say Sarsaparilla is Batman. Blue Vervain's Flash, right? You know, they, you have all these different superheroes. Sea uh, moss does the majority, but you have some that do. Other things better than what Superman would do that one thing, right? Um, what else? I, you know, I'm a vegan, a whole food plant based vegan. I've been a vegan for six years. I play really? year basketball vegan, yeah. Um, I, have, I even have the tattoo right there. Vegan tattoo. All right, now, Mr. V. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, you know, and, and just to finish, you know, what I was saying about my my diet, you know, she just asked a question. She was like, what, Lance, what is your favorite fat sources? My favorite fat sources are nuts and seeds and avocado, wow. nut seeds, avocado, cacao, uh, hemp, um, coconut. Hemp is a fat source? Hemp? Yeah. Hemp is, high, hemp is extremely high in fat. Really? Yes. I yes. had no idea. Yeah, hemp, hemp, cacao, cacao is high in fat. Uh, avocado is high in fat. I Walnuts know about avocado. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all fat. Typically, if you can make a butter or oil from it, it's high in fat. Ah. Yeah. And I have been since I've learned about av avocados and digestion and it was something else. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, okay, so I start putting um avocados in my smoothie with oh, yeah. my uh sea moss and it tastes delicious try try putting some avocado in a, a chocolate smoothie oh it okay. make you rich rich really? rich oh yeah okay so what kind of chocolate do you use because we're not using this uh chocolate milk so no. so how are you doing that pure good just pure cacao say Organic that again cacao. Cacao, raw oh, organic okay. cacao. Okay. Cacao. Yeah. In Jamaica, you know, we have a cacao tree that grows across the street from my from my family's. So get I, out of here. Go and get it out the tree and not eat eat on the tree. Uh ladies <laughs> of the female solution, can we have our next conference in Jamaica? I know y'all uh, listening oh, here. We need to have a conference oh, in Jamaica. We need uh, a conference in Jamaica. Uh, Jody says, yeah, I want a t-shirt. We all want a Jamaican <laughs> t-shirt, okay? Uh, yeah. She also says, uh, uh, Viata says, uh, yes, think hemp oil. oil. And Jody says, mm -hmm. hemp is yeah. great for your brain and so is cacao. Love this yeah. cacao powder. Am I saying that right? Powder, yeah. Cacao powder. And the only place that I know to get it is at Costco, even though I'm sure somebody else has it. You can get it on Amazon. You know, Amazon has all this stuff. Yes, they do. And I can't yeah. stay on Amazon, but I order from them because it's just so convenient. I don't have to go to the store. I really, I can't stay in them. I really can't. But, you know, I, how do you continue to give your money to somebody you can't stand? And I'm not giving it to you. I'm giving it to the suppliers. That's how I have yeah, it. Yeah, rip that you really are. You know, you give it a small portion to Amazon, but you're giving it a lot to the to the people. You know, we're gonna put our stuff on there too because that's the biggest market in the world, right? In we're the having, world. Yeah, people will skip over you if you don't if you don't have it on Amazon, they don't think you're legitimate. They sure don't. Let me tell yeah. you, we had an Amazon account, the Higher Learning Network, and we, yeah. we only kept it long enough to make enough money to hire a grant writer to uh, help us get funding for our projects, like the homeless project, in which I uh, I did talk about, but I did not talk about the um, the youth global virtual youth talent. Am I saying that wrong? I'm saying that wrong. Let me find the banner, the the promo for it. That way, I don't have to worry about me seeing it on the global virtual teen talent contest. We have a contest where we encourage our youth between the ages of 13 and 19. Attention, all talented to compete. Ages 13 to 19. Are you ready to show the world what you've got? We're excited to announce the latest global virtual teen talent contest, where you win cash prizes and scholarships by performing your unique talent. Here's how to participate. 1. Record a one-minute video of yourself performing your talent. 2. Upload the video, link in description or comment. 3. Submit your video by the deadline. We're looking for a wide range of talents, from singing and dancing to magic tricks and comedy skits. So whether you're a musician, an actor, or a chef, we want to see your unique talents. The top talents will be selected by a panel of judges and will be announced shortly after. So don't wait, start filming, and good luck. And good luck to the contestants. If you are, are, if you have children or know of children between the ages of 13 and 19, have them send in a one-minute video clip from YouTube, from their own YouTube channel, not a MOV file, and they can compete in the Global Virtual Teen Talent Contest, which airs every last Saturday 
of the month. So it's coming up April 29th. So I know you know some children. So send us send them this way, Curse. Um, Lance Curse. What did I call you? Curse Lance. I know, no, that's what everybody calls me by my last name, though. That's funny that you Oh, do they? Okay, good. Yeah, play sports. Good. Uh, you call you call people by their last name. I gotta ask you this question. Why do men hit each other on the butt when they make a pass, when they make a goal or whatever they call it? Good is a good job thing. It's it's not oh, a is it's, that it's there's nothing sexual about it. It's just it's just good job, man. Just okay, but yeah. why it's got to be on the butt? I could could be on the arm. I I don't want to. There's things about sports I don't understand, yeah. so I have to ask. Yeah, uh, that's you know this this is something that's been around for for hundreds about a hundred I don't know around a hundred years. I don't know. It's 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 like a it's like a, a man to man thing. You know, I'm pretty sure there's some things that women do with each other that you know men would never understand. But it's one of those things where you're like, hey, yo, good job. And you know, we don't think anything past that. We just, it's not even a thought. Like we, like when we do it, it's so, it's so unconscious, so subconscious, we don't even think that we don't even know we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, uh, was- because, because men, we like to be, um, the biggest, the biggest, um, congrats. The biggest thing you can compliment a man on is, is his work ethic or what he did, his job. That he, mm. he doesn't care about how he looks. You know, did he do a good job? Thank you. Because if you let me know I did a good job, that means I'm I'm competent at what I'm doing. That means my life is going to be better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We don't, like me, I don't care about nothing it's until you tell me, hey, good job. All right. Thank you. That's the biggest compliment. That's all I need. I don't, need, I don't care about no other compliment. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just a good job. Well, uh, Lance, you've done a very good job here today, and we could not have done it without you. And I want to thank you for hanging in there with us because we have had all kinds of uh, technical issues this morning because there are powers that be the sick care system. They want us to remain sick forever so they can keep giving us prescription drugs. That's just the way it is. Yeah. But it's the cause of people like you in your consciousness that that's uh, available. Now, we are being joined by our executive producer of The Female Solution, and her name is Naima Latif. There she is. Can you hear us, Naima? She's looking at me like I'm crazy. I don't know if she can hear. Naima, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I'm just trying to figure out which of these windows to close because I know I have uh, a ton of them. We we can see you, though. Yeah, we see you loud and clear. She's looking all purdy in her purple this morning. She's on her way out the door. I know. Uh Uh-oh, there she goes. She'll be back. But it's important that we realize the the importance of what we put on our skin and what we put in our bodies. Because I'm listening to, was it Niecy Nash, I think, had her mom on the show. And she was talking about how when she was growing, growing up. And as a single mom, she had to take care of her children and they were all eating, you know, from McDonald's and all the fast food places. But when her mom came to live with her, her mom started cooking and now they eat food and they don't eat junk food anymore. And mm-hmm. they can appreciate that. They miss the garbage, yeah. but they can appreciate the food that mom gives them. And sea moss is food as far as I'm concerned, because you take it every day. If you want to feel good, if you want to look good, just get some sea moss in your life. Now, uh, let me see. We got some uh, other comments here. Uh, if you want to get a call to ask Lance a question, and you need to press one now, we got about five minutes. Five one five six zero five nine three two five. Press one to speak, and there she is again. Let's see if we can get her back. <laughs> okay, yeah, she had, had Facebook up on, and then I also came up on the screen. Oh, okay, this me that's got the uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we had all kind of crazy this craziness this morning, but uh, that does not stop the message from from getting through because those who need to hear it will hear. It. You got any uh, questions to ask Lance before he leaves? He's leaving in about five, six, seven minutes. Yes. Well, you know what? I I did want to. I you know you got me dying laughing about the oh a virtual pat on the behind. You're doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about the watermelon run. I'm always laughing at my mother because you know she's from the south, mm-hmm. and when they eat a watermelon, they like scrape the rind with their teeth. You know, I'm like, oh my, that's so country. But you just said that 
that's actually a, a part. Explain that again about what what the Rhine does and all. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great question. So, do you know about like statins? Yeah, I think you logged on twice. No, no, okay, we're good. So, do you know about statins for blood pressure? I don't think yeah. so. No. So, so, so the doctor the doctor gives out a drug called a statin. People have high blood pressure and whatnot to to help their their blood flow better for their heart, mm-hmm. so their heart can relax, right? Mm-hmm. What things you can give them? You give them magnesium that can let, let that blood, you know, the muscles in the blood and the heart, you know, flow better. Mm-hmm. But there's um, you know, that you have you have endothelial cells, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning in inner lining of your 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 cell your uh, your veins and your arteries it releases a, a chemical called nitric oxide nitric oxide dilates those veins so basically being like a statin so so typically you know people are in people are much smarter than they think they are right you no know, because they want to make us feel dumber but we're not so you know these people who typically have high blood pressure will go towards foods that are going to help them with their high blood pressure. And that's what watermelon is. That's what that white part does. It helps you with your high blood pressure and your blood flow. So intrinsically, people know I need watermelon because it's from the same environment that my ancestors are from. Ah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so basically, you know, they well, – so think about it like this. Typically, when you, when you go outside and, you know, you're in a black neighborhood, they're like, oh, you got dark. Mm-hmm. Right. Make a big issue about that, right? Yes, I've been through that. Yes, so, so, black and the sweet juice, baby. You need to know. Yeah. Yes. So, so they say, "Oh, you got dark." Well, essentially, what they're saying is they're trying to fear you into not getting darker, aka not getting vitamin D. Mm. Oh, you're a watermelon eater. Oh, you're not trying to reverse any of the high blood pressure or blood issues you have because you live above the thirty, the twenty third parallel. If you live above the Tropic of Cancer, above Cuba, you're going to have some issues with your blood if your ancestors are from that part of Africa where, where a lot of our ancestors come from, mm-hmm. right? If our nostrils are wide, our hair stands up, hair, skin's dark, we're going to have issues living above Cuba. So anything above Cuba, anything in the U.S., we're going to have issues. Wow. We, we belong in tropical zones. We're tropical human beings because our nostrils are wide. Right. We need, we need hotter. We need to be in a hotter climate. If our right. nostrils were tighter, well, then we could live great above that twenty-third parallel. We'd be good in New, New York, Chicago, right. because our nostrils are tight and it, and it humidifies the air before it goes in, into our. Yeah, the hair would drop down to cover the neck, to cover mm. the neck because it's cold, like a hoodie or a scarf. Mm. The hair initially grows up to block the sun from hitting us. The neck is exposed to cool us down. Mm. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah, so so that watermelon is literally the biggest piece. Never be afraid of eating watermelon. Never be afraid of getting darker. I want to be as black as I can possibly be because I know I'm healthier the darker I am. I don't care what society says or you're prettier. I don't care. It's what what's going to make me healthier? Me being dark. Me well, I really don't, don't want get. this information to get through, do they? Oh, well, it's too late. late. You've done it. It's, it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I mm-hmm. mean, it makes so much sense. Just so, but now wh- where where is the area that watermelon originally grows? What areas? It's a tropical fruit. So they don't they say it's seasonal, but it's only anytime you have tropical light conditions, watermelon's there. So that's mm-hmm. why you only get it around the summer. So right now the summer's coming back around, it's April. Yeah, it's you're gonna have a watermelon whenever uh it, it's from April to September or October, that's when you get watermelon, mm-hmm. right? Spring and the summer is when you get watermelon. But in Jamaica, we get it year round. I was eating watermelon in December wow. in Jamaica because it's the wow. trend. Well, you know, I tried to grow. You know, you said it was the time to go to Jamaica. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. Go. Got to get some watermelon uh, in Can December. We, Naima, 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 can we say Female Solution Annual uh, Women of Wonder Awards in Jamaica? Yes, we can. Yes, yes we, can. we can. All right. All right, Deborah, you heard that. Look that plane. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Deborah. Deborah is our uh, third uh, yeah. Saturday post uh, from 12 noon until 2 p.m. on the Female Solution, and she's she's a travel agent as well. So Deborah is going to be in charge. Of that. We going, we coming. So Lance, yeah. we need to know when you going so we can come too. Uh, <laughs> watermelon is so good for you. It is also very grounding. In addition to what you're sharing, Lance, the white yeah. part, right? 
So, so there's the there's the red part, the the juicy part, and then the rind. What we call it. The, we should be eating the rind too. I saw an old man eating rind one day, and I looked him up. Absolutely. Right? He said, "Baby, yeah. if you eat it, will you eat it too?" And I was like, yeah. oh. "I got I got a question because last year I tried to grow watermelon. I think I maybe waited too late in the year to. What do you live? Uh, I live in Chicago, so it's not watermelon. It's cool. climate, you know, no, at all. That's right. But what happened was when I got ready to harvest it. Um, there was no red part. It was only the white part. And I thought, well, maybe it's because I didn't let it grow long enough. But I ate it. You know, I was the only one in the family that ate it. Like, yeah, everybody was going. But, you know, I ate it because I thought, well, it might be something nutrition, nutritional about it. But now, was that an unripe watermelon or was that just a watermelon that had only rind? And, and yeah. was that, you know, could, could I have gotten any nutritional value out of that? Well, I, I'm amazed that it even grew, right? Because so, so you have... Fruits that depend on cold uh, temperature, like berries, and you have fruits like watermelon that hate cold temperatures. Yeah. So it's you summertime, know, but it was you know summertime in the north. So yeah. So 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 there's a period called dormancy, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning it's cold. So like um, fruits that grow above the 23rd parallel or above the tropic of uh, the subtropics, they need to be submerged underground for 700 to 1,000 hours under 47 degrees Fahrenheit, that's called dormancy. Oh. If you put a watermelon through that tim that 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 pressure, it's not gonna grow. Because oh. a watermelon is a tropical fruit. It cannot be in dormancy. Mm. So that's why I, I've never seen someone grow watermelon in, in Chicago because it's just not set up for that way. I'm gonna try like, in, but like, like the apples you get here in America are not the apples you get in Jamaica. We don't know what those apples look like here in Jamaica. Wow. They, they can't yeah. grow a specific environment. Yeah. So everything is completely different. So yeah, yeah. It's well now I got another question because a lot of our fruits that we eat here are probably hothouse grown, where you know the, the, the temperatures and everything are artificially created, the lighting is artificially created. Mm -hmm. What does that do when you or what does it not do when you are eating fruits and vegetables that are grown in a hot house with artificial lighting as opposed to sunlight that actually has vitamin D? Can there would there be a lessening of nutritional value? I believe so. Uh, me personally, you know, I typically don't speak on things I don't know because I don't like putting my foot in my mouth. I believe that it will have a lesser value because it's not made in an organic natural state. But then again, if you're mimicking like the sunlight, like let's say right now, you know, you probably have LED lights in your house mm -hmm. where you probably want to put incandescent light bulbs. Like that's like the light bulb that has the electricity. You know, the old school incandescent light bulbs. Yeah. That's mimicking the sun. Oh. Right? So the incandescent light bulbs, you may want to substitute all those out, put the incandescent in there. Uh, if you're mimicking the sun and you're getting that full spectrum of color and light from the sunlight, cool, right? Uh, because, you know, we live in an environment. We live in, like the last podcast we had, we, we live in convenience. And we can't inconvenience ourselves in a convenient life. We won't make money. We won't live. Right? So a lighthouse may be the best option for you if you're living in in a temperature house if you're living in um, a Chicago or if you're living above that. You know, Chicago is probably like 39, 39th parallel, 40th Ooh. parallel, 47th parallel, Ooh. right? Uh, yeah. Anything above that like 35th parallel, that means you're out of the subtropical zone. Oh. So that 35th parallel also kind of lines up with the, uh, the Macy-Dixon line, which is the 37th parallel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so... Where do we go, Lance, to find this, to understand this? Because I hear you, but I don't still don't understand these parallels. The 35th parallel, the 39th you know, parallel. They stopped teaching geography in school yeah. where you understand the globe and, and you know, how the, how it's, how, you know, the latitude, longitude and all that is measured. They stopped really teaching that because I think that, Teachers probably stop knowing it, <laughs> so yeah. well, I, I think they know, but it's you know it's better for it's better for you to uh, to not know for them, right? Because the more you know, the more you can help yourself, right? And right. the less the less sickness you have, yeah. So it's, it's better for for you to for you to rely on no no one's gonna no one who's trying to take money from you is gonna give you knowledge to not Ooh. to not take <laughs> not for you to not take money from them. 
more money, more money. I got a question. Viata had a question here. Oh, there it is. Uh, so purpose healing. Viata says, does Jamaica still have seeds in the watermelons? Costa Rica still has seeds, but they're hard to find in Orlando. It's hard to find here in Chicago, too. Everywhere I go, it's watermelon with no seeds. I don't do seeds. They don't want you to grow it. Because I, I know it's not real. It's manufactured. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah, we see you. Okay, Okay. so here we go. So so what we're looking at right now, this red this red area? Oh, no, no. We don't see that. Um, oh, is All there right. a way that he can share it or? Uh, uh, I don't know, Naima. You're the technical expert on this. I have it. I have it. I have it. Share. I'm sharing it now. You see it? No, we don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, there it is. Okay, so let me add the screen. There we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. you can see it. All right. Oh, okay. So for all of you all who didn't go. have geography in school, pay attention. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you see this red area? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see this red area here? No, I don't. Which which block is it? Put your cursor oh, you on. Wanna this one here? This whole red area. This whole red area. All this red, oh. whole. Is now, that now, right? Now, is that third, right you know, here? Yeah, the third. Uh, the big one. The big third, right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This this whole red area. This whole this whole area in the middle here, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the tropics. You have two tropics. You have the Tropic of Cancer. Tropic of Capricorn, where they end. The equator is in the middle of it, right? Mm -hmm. Typically, people who have of African ancestry come from right here in that tropic. Yes. Right? Al along that coast. Whenever you go above this line, above that red line, that's when you begin to have a lot of sickness if, you're, if your ancestors are from this region. Wow. You're going to get a bunch of blood conditions, a bunch of you know, heart related conditions once you exit out that, that red line. Okay. Now uh, explain to us exactly what this is again, uh, Lance. So, so this is a map explaining the lines and, and how your body lines up with those lines and what's going to happen to your body. If you leave these zones, if you, if you leave those lines. Oh. Right? So, so if, if you're, if your hair grows up like an Afro and your nostrils are wide, typically you're from this region of the world. Okay. Right, because it's hot and humid, and there's a lot of and the sun is more intense there, so your body has to match the environment. Right. So when you leave an environment like this and you go above that red line, well, then now that's when disease starts to happen to oh. a higher degree, to a higher degree. Right. If you're, so let's say this, you see this dotted line here. Yeah. That's the subtropics. That's where the subtropics end at. Oh. So anything above that, like a Chicago, Chicago would be somewhere up here. Up uh, there, yeah. You're you're gonna be so, sick. so much disease. Yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna have you know not only blood conditions, you're gonna have a lot of mental issues because of you're, you're lacking light. So you're you're gonna have a seasonal affective disorder probably year round. Wow. wow. You're gonna want to shoot, kill, stab, fight, argue with people a lot more. <laughs> Wow. So, what, is the, what is the remedy for that? More sunlight? Uh, what? Uh, change of diet? All of All that. Of All of it. Everything you, everything you can think of, it, it's the remedy. It's the change of diet. It's the, it's the uh, you know, you may want to get those incandescent lights, right? Because those artificial lights are doing a number to you. You don't even want those, those artificial lights hitting your skin. Wow. Mm. You, uh, now, I got a question then. Because... Yes, after the pandemic, when you know they were having everybody stay inside and, and you know locked down and no one going outside, and then it's like people exploded with violent insanity. Yeah. Could that have been an effect of uh, absence of sunlight and Absolutely. having an effect on the brain? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So typically right right just before spring, mm -hmm. that's when you see a lot of um suicides. Just before wow. spring. Right before spring? That's when a lot of suicides happen. Really? They've been inside all winter. Why is been, that? Because they've been inside all winter. The, the disease has been, been, been festering. A lot of flus happen just before winter as well, like in February, March. Yeah. That's when that's when the peak, the peak of it is, is February, February, March. The peak of flu season. So because it, it's being developed over those four months of, of winter. Mm. Well, can you imagine if instead of them pushing the flu shots, they just push people to go outside more in the winter. <laughs> they can't make any money off of that. Well, right. well nobody, nobody in the world would make money 
if if mm. you if you make people health, healthy, there's no economy. Wow, we have to come up with a a, a health time economy because otherwise we keep repressing knowledge that could make a well society. So we have to create a wellness economy because as long as it's based on, you're right, as long as it's based on sick care, then they're, they're going to keep not letting people know that they have the power to heal themselves. Well, well think about it like this. Think, think about it like this, you know, and I'm not trying to make an excuse for the system. It's just that, you know, these systems are set up for people who don't want to do the job because most people, you mm -hmm. tell them what to do, how to get healthy, how to eat, they don't do it. Mm -mm, sure don't. Right? I learned so, with diabetes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go right yeah. here. So, so, so therefore, even though people know all the knowledge, we live in a, a, a era of, of knowledge. Most people don't want to provide those structures that has consistency and, and, and reliability and accountability. Most people... Most people give away their accountability to a pill because they're like, yeah, I'm working out too much. Let me just take this pill. Yeah. Mm. Most people know, I, I, I demonize, you know, Western medicine as well, but I have to de demonize them to the point where they have their equal share because they're just, they're plugging in a, a piece of where they fit because they know the majority of people are not going to do the work it takes to be healthy. And we can't have an, a, an economy of people that are not healthy out there doing whatever because now it's it's worse for other people. So I have to provide a, a, at least a little bit of solution to keep you alive so you can continue making money, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't I, I don't demonize them one hundred percent fully because once you once you get once you get in the health like me I'm in the health world once you get in it you understand how people think and you're like mm, now I see why they do that because mm -hmm. people aren't who they say they are they say they'll do it but they never do it. They don't. Yeah. Right. Sure, they yeah. say they want to be healthy, but they don't want to they don't want the work it takes to be healthy. I've spoken to hundreds and thousands of people. They don't they don't want it. They don't they don't want we have that been work. indoctrinated since birth. And we do what other people do because we don't want to feel uncomfortable doing there something on our own. That there takes too much. Uh, Jody says we can we grow watermelons well in Georgia. We're starting yes. our gardens now. OK, Georgia. Yes. Uh, Georgia got some of the best watermelons. All right. Well, we'll be down there. We're going to Georgia, and then we're going to run on over to Jamaica. But right now, we're going to run to the phone line. You got time for a call, uh, uh, Lance? Oh, no. I, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. You, you got uh 706-202. I do believe that is Baba Kwame's son horse from Georgia. Get, get your watermelon in the ground, Baba Kwame. <laughs> just Baba Kwame's son horse. Yes, loud and clear. Go right ahead. And, and yes. And then being the season, 
So when you get back on the order of nature, your diet should reflect nature's production. So nature produces certain things at certain times of the season, and these are the things that are most conducive for our health. So I, I commend him for what he's sharing, and we need to begin to understand none but ourselves can free our minds. And ask the question, how does this free me? Because, you know, you can enslave yourself to food. Yes, sir. You you are right on target. When we, we as I said earlier, we leave one box and we go right into another box. And I'm a prime example. That's why, you know, the sun is creeping through the window. And sometime I, 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 Tony will come in, my husband Tony will come in, and I'm sitting here in the chair just sitting in the, sitting in the sun. Are you okay? Uh, baby, I'm fine. I'm <laughs> so okay. You ain't yeah. got the TV on, you ain't got the radio. I, I'm sitting up here soaking up the sun, and I know I should probably be up on the roof, but right now I'm in this uninterrupted mm -hmm. sun experience. This is what I'm having. I'm good. Trust me on this one. And <clears throat> Bob, Baba, Baba Kwame, he um, he hit it on the head. That's I, I couldn't have I couldn't have put it better. Like no one could put it better than what he just put it. He's absolutely 100% correct. You know, we, we share the exact same philosophy. The, the more you remove yourself from nature, the more you disconnect yourself from nature, the more you, you, think, that, you think that you can replace what God created, good luck. Yeah. So now I, I got another question then, uh, because I, I'm reading about how some schools have changed the, the way they operate and have most of their classrooms outside where children have sunlight they can run through the grass they can play they can learn about nature instead of this you know sit down with your hands folded behind the desk in this dark classroom and of course they are seeing that children are developing healthier emotionally and socially because of the freedom of being outside in a natural environment not repressed and, and restricted and getting sunshine so do you see that as perhaps even a remedy of this difficulty we're having with hostility in school where it's becoming more well it's actually operated like a prison now and the the violence is just increasing because of so much pent-up frustration restricted movement and lack of sunlight and of course bad food non-nutrition food so do you see if, if we change that whole uh atmosphere and make classrooms more outdoors and freer and more expressive you, you see that as possibly solving the problem that we have uh, a, a, um, a variable in solving the problem mm -hmm. right because it's multivariate it's probably about a thousand things we got to do right yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, but think about it where do they get the common way of living in America? Where do we get the common way of dressing in America? We don't get it from a tropical region. Right. Mm -hmm. We get it from a cold region. Everything's coming out of European culture where it's cold. So you have yeah. to put people in the class to keep them from, away from the, the, the environment because the environment's going to harm them. If that's the thinking of the people who created that system. Well, well, well that's the thinking and that's the environment. If I lived in that environment, which I did live in Europe, it's cold, so I'm gonna stay inside, right? right yeah. But you cannot now say, "Hey, keep people inside where the weather is the best." Uh, what? <laughs> like, uh, 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 people of so many different nutrients from the sun, vitamin D, which is actually a hormone which controls hormones. That's probably why a lot of people have endometriosis and all these other, you know, things that a lot of women are having, right? Because the vitamin D controls 300 to 400 genes. It's, it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. If you don't have it, you are not yourself. Mm. Vitamin you are, D is a hormone? It's a hormone, it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. It controls, it, it controls or turn off genes. So if you're deprived of vitamin D or sunlight, you, you are sick, you are a sick human being. Like, it is what it is, but and I, I'm not trying to demonize the system or Europeans. I'm not trying to demonize anyone. I'm just trying to put things in perspective. You need sunlight right. for mental health. 
don't put don't leave people in 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 a building in an apartment when you live in an environment where it's great like right. it, like no no you keep them inside in the arctic or something like that that's cool because it's so cold in there out there but if you're in the middle of summer get those kids outside get yourself outside get get around people start talking to people an environment uh, environment changes how you think right it does typically when you're in an environment that's cold you have to be very structured, very clean, very, very rigid and to the point, right? Mm -hmm. When you're in a, a, an environment that's very, um, that's warm, you're more relaxed. Yes. 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 You're going to share. You're going to do this because in a, in a warm environment, there's more fruit, there's more food. You're going right. to share more. Well, right. oh, here you go because there's more that grows on the tree. But in, the, in, in January in the UK, you're not going to share more often because you don't know when another food's going to come by. Mm. It just, just doesn't provide it that way. So yet you're going to be a lot colder. When I lived in Europe, I was a lot colder because the environment made me like that. Like me as a person, I was like that. The environment, you have to adapt to the environment. So yeah, it's just going to be cold. <laughs> and, and the fear is that there's not enough because the, environment, you know, the environment's not producing it. And if you stored some food, you're afraid it's going to run out. And so it creates a culture of non-sharing or fear of lack because you don't see it being plentiful. There you go. And that's it. I'm not demonizing a person. It's the environment that makes a person right. like that. Right. Um, you know, I go to Jamaica and I'm mad sometimes because people are slow and don't and they don't take things don't serious. Things. <laughs> I have to wait. And I'm like... Well, I am in the tropics, right? I, I know they're going to be an hour late because they don't care. <laughs> when, when I was living in, when I was in uh, Istanbul, Turkey, and when I was, you know, living in these different regions, Amsterdam and stuff, it was on time. It was right then and there. Mm. You have your advantages and your disadvantages. I'm not saying that, you know, the tropics are all great and Europe is all bad. It has its advantages and disadvantages. So, that's so, yeah. one thing is Pick your that's one thing they do say about uh, being in uh, tropical uh, islands is that you cannot be in a hurry because they are on a whole nother level. Ain't nobody over here rushing. Yeah. You, 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 might, you might want to drink a glass of sea moss before you leave so you can be <laughs> you get there. I've learned that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> when you travel, you get to see that America is the best the best you can get the best of both worlds in America. I, you know, a lot of people demonize America. I don't demonize because I've traveled the whole world, played in China, lived in Egypt. You know, I, I've I've seen everything. America's it's 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 all put in one, right? Where you get everything, and you're not lacking too much here. You're not lacking too much there. It's really in the middle. But you know, sometimes we like to glorify other cultures, like if they're the best. It's like they got some flaws too. America has their flaws. I'll take Jamaica flaws any day over America. <laughs> I just, I just want to go sit in the sun by a tree. Y'all just drop me off by a tree, leave me on the island, and I'm good. Listen, I, I love my country. I love all the islands. But there's a reason why the economy struggles because people don't want to work. Yeah. But now, if you have food growing and and you don't necessarily have to put effort toward it, then that's not going to be a motivation to work because things will grow if you do nothing. So. You know, I can understand why that culture would evolve that way. Yeah, but but now they're in a way. But the majority of people there don't grow their own stuff. They they depend on KFC. Oh, oh yeah. Well, if you gotta pay money for food instead of letting it grow out the ground, yeah, you gotta have a work economy. But yeah. they don't want a work economy because it's too hot, and they don't want to do certain things. It's not structured, yeah. right? Give up KFC. You can't have it both ways. If you're gonna buy outside sources of food that requires money then that means you have to work for money but mm -hmm. if you are going to live off the land and be relaxed and non-stressed and non-rushed then that's what you have to adapt to that kind of diet that kind of lifestyle uh self-sufficiency so i mean like you say america can show you both both sides and you decide what fits the lifestyle you want to choose you, for you for because you. the majority of people are not going to live like how you are going to live if you want to be healthy the majority of people don't care about health until they're almost about to die right yeah. 
right? Until you go get a diagnosis that says you have diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, whatever. Then you start paying attention. That's that 80-20 rule. 80% of people just don't care. Mm. Right? I've spoken and been around people. They, the majority of people I talk to, they don't care about is it. Is that an American time. mindset or is that a world mindset? That's a okay. world. That's a world. That's a world. That's, a, that's a world because once you get exposed to once you get exposed to convenience, it's hard to go back to inconvenience. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. If, if, if I now say, hey, hmm, I have a UFO that can get you from here to the next state in two seconds. You're gonna to want to take that. You're not gonna to want to drive. You're not gonna to want to walk or ride a bike. You want the fastest and easy route because you're exposed to it already. Mm -hmm. In America, most parts of the world, you're exposed to high technology. You will never want to go back to growing your own food. Why would I grow my own food when I can go get somebody else to, to, to pick it? Right? right. Not understanding in order to grow their own food, to, for somebody to grow their food for you, they have to grow for a, a large quantity of people. Now, mm -hmm. if you grow for a large quantity of people, how do you keep Inventory and produce fresh, preservatives. Mm. So there's drawback, but but mm. it, how do I now tell somebody who's making a million dollars and they're living a convenient lifestyle to not inconvenience themselves? Oh, I'm going to lose my money if I inconvenience myself. I have to continue living convenience. Mm. So they're never going to go back because they're exposed to it. And we just have to be honest with the reality of this world. You're going to live that way. The majority of people are not going to live that way. You care about your health. The majority of people don't care about their health. So they pay the price. They have to pay the price. But but a lot of people, they want a, a Lamborghini for a Honda price, though. Ah. <laughs> really? They want to pay $200 a month for a car that is a $20,000 a month car. Yeah. Mm. And they think, I should have it. Well, what do you mean you should have that? You can't have your cake and eat it too when it comes to health and, and making mm -hmm. money. You have to inconvenience yourself and typically live without money, but be rich in resources or have money and be poor in resources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. That's typically how it is. Yeah, some people can do both, but how are you going to gain the knowledge for resources and money at the same time? Right. Right. right? Yeah. There's a certain choice you have to make. So even when people discover that the food they're eating is slowly poisoning them to death and they're going to have to go through uncomfortable medical procedures, they would still rather have the convenience of going to purchase food than digging the dirt in their own yard and growing food themselves. Yeah, because they'll lose money. And, mm -hmm. and what makes our economy run, what, what keeps us, what keeps them, keep, keep, keep me on this Mac computer, what gives me this iPhone, what allows me to do work, money. Right. What allows me to live in this apartment in Miami? My money. You know, if I didn't make money, I couldn't live here. All right. So, yeah, I have I had the knowledge before I had the money. Right. So I had to. So now I can use it for my for my betterment. But I had to, one has to come before the other. And it takes time to, to learn how to live off the land and learn how to make money. Yeah. It's difficult. Most people know one or the other. People yeah. in Jamaica know how to live off the land if they want to. People in America know how to make money. Now, if you do both at the same time, you're a dangerous human being. Mm. Well, that's my goal. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, know that's right. I know that's right. And yeah. I am going to be updating my blog as I always do on zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. Uh, we are officially in the after show, but I want people to know that it, uh, any of the information that you share with us is going to be on my blog, zelvaspeaks.wordpress.com. And I want you to give us some, um, like, top maybe three tips. Yeah. Um, you guys have a call, too. I don't know if you took uh, 773-977. I don't know if you heard We'll it. take all the calls, but I'm, I'm here, man. I'm here. Any questions, CMOS, anything help? I'm here all right. Me. Well, let's get some calls in here. 773-977. You are live on the Female Solution Grand Rising. What's your name? And where are you calling from? Good morning. This is Lois calling from Chicago, Illinois. Hi, Lois. Glory be to God for everybody today. Hi. You know, uh, I, 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 this is such a wonderful topic. And, and thank you, Brother Lance. And, and, and I'm just wondering, Brother Lance, are you related to Twyla Lance? To who, Lance? Twyla Lance. Choir Lance. Squire, S-Q-U-I-R-E, Squire. Oh, Squire Lance. No, his name is Lance Kern. Oh, Kern, okay. 
Yeah. All right, thank you. I, the last time I was in uh, the Bahamas, I think about 1997, the watermelons were like $50. I'm wondering how much are the watermelons now? And, and that information on the watermelons today is just a, a blessing from God. I'm going to start eating to the wine now. <laughs> so thank you so much. To the white meat. <laughs> to the white meat. <laughs> you can't let the white meat. Thank you, Lois. Appreciate that, girl. Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Lance. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's asking about the price of water, right? Water water or watermelon? Watermelon. <laughs> right watermelon, yeah. Yeah, so it depends on where you're from, right? Or where you're at. Because, like I said Did earlier. she say $50? I thought I thought what I heard she says the, the watermelon somewhere was they were charging fifty dollars. In Chicago, yeah. Lois, mm. did you say fifty dollars? Yes, yes, I did. Five zero. We took, we took Bahamas fifty dollars. Yes. So I just wonder how much are the watermelons? Does anyone know? And I yeah. So, I bought one for five dollars for watermelon. Yeah. Oh no! Don't do you don't don't you don't want to eat seedless. If it ain't got a seed, you don't even want it. I get it from a, I get it from a brother on the Dan Ryan Expressway right off of 95th Street. He got a whole truck of watermelon. They paid twenty dollars for Mississippi. Yeah. I'll pay twenty dollars. Yeah, the Mississippi uh, watermelons. I'll pay twenty dollars for a good watermelon because it ain't nothing like a good watermelon. Ain't nothing like nothing worse than a bad watermelon. Mm. <laughs> yeah, unsweet. Um, no seeds. I don't Taste know about the fifty though. I paid twenty. I don't know about that fifty. Laboratory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but like, but to answer her question, everything's based on supply and demand, right? Where do you have the highest supply? Well, you know, what I mean, then it's going to be cheaper. Wherever you have the the lowest supply, right? It's going to be be higher. Be higher, right? So, you know, watermelon doesn't typically grow in Orlando. Like it, it's hard for watermelon to grow outside that thirty fifth parallel, that dotted line I showed you guys. That dotted line is a lot. It, there's a lot behind those lines, right? There's a lot of knowledge of knowing what's going on. So above that dotted line, yeah, everything's going to be more expensive. It's like, it's like, um, you know, any anywhere things don't grow. Like if bananas don't grow in Chicago, it's going to be more expensive. But they grow, right. but they they grow plentiful in in um, here in Miami. So it's going to be less expensive. Watermelon's going to be less less expensive. I bought mine for ten dollars. A big, big one, a huge one. Like I could eat two days, three days off of, of the one I have. Really? For ten dollars? Yeah. Ten dollars. We need to be in in, in Florida. Yeah, but then keep in mind, everyone wants to be here, so the price to live here is extreme. everything is hot as yeah. drought. Yeah. yeah. So, so where the where the where the food would be less expensive, the natural foods, the the price of living is going to be more expensive because everyone wants that same access. Now, I have another question uh, since you mentioned uh, supply and demand. And we all know that, that the government has done this when they pay farmers not to grow food ah. in order to keep the price high. And yeah. I think that's just atrocious because there's enough land in this world for everybody to eat and and we have transportation systems to transport food wherever it doesn't grow so there's really no reason for anybody to be hungry and yet because the incentive or the intention is to keep the price high in order to make a profit farmers will sometimes be paid to not grow food yeah and is that's what that is changeable i believe it's changeable i believe that people can choose to help the earth be as plentiful as it can be so that everybody can eat. And I believe we can create an economy that's not based on someone getting a profit, but it's based on everyone getting what they need yes. and, and no one suffering. I believe we can do that. But what, what are your thoughts on that? The fact that you know we, we're actually artificially being made to pay more for, for food. Yeah. Um... Oh man, that that's a loaded question, and I have the I I, I oh, love talking. Topic. I love this topic, man. It's so so you have to keep the price of living at a certain price, right? Um, you know, for people for people to play the game, right? Uh, that's just e that's just econ, right? Because you know, if you don't, then everything just go, goes haywire, right? Um, what you're what you're saying goes against capitalism right mm -hmm. if you go against capitalism what are we going to have a bartering system 
Well, now, what do we have before we had capitalism? Come on what now, we, What would happen if people just shared and everybody got what they need and a profit was not necessary because all you need basically is your food, clothing, and shelter. What if there was no need for a profit because everybody just simply wanted what they wanted and they could get it and nobody had to suffer? Well, that comes with no cars, no cell phone, no technology. That comes with no no first world things. Not necessarily. It's just, it comes with a mindset where everybody who produces those things does it because that's part of what they contribute. You look at a beehive, they produce honey. Yeah. Everybody in that beehive survives and everybody contributes. Nobody's punching the clock. Yeah. Nobody's paying rent. Yeah. Everybody contributes. It's a mindset. It's the collective mindset that you understand that everybody thrives when everybody thrives. And so, so there's no intentional depriving some people of other of what they need. And so therefore, there's no conflict between people. So have, you, have, you, have, you ever, have you ever seen a society that exists that does that today? Yes, that exists. Where? Uh, to, today it exists. Where? Uh, like a whole country. Like a whole country. That, that in a is. whole country, no, among smaller groups of people who have that mindset. Exactly. So so you, you can't run a whole country off of that mindset because now you're telling them to go be inconvenienced convenience themselves. Like like you would tell them to live like uh what is it not, not Mormons, what are they called? The people who the Amish people? The Amish. You, you're telling yeah. people Unless the people who produce technology and all the other conveniences that we have are also of that collective mindset. Well, how do they get paid for this technology? What do you need money for? If everyone simply contributes and instead of money, I mean, you could cut, because money is, is like a means of exchange, but you don't really need the means of exchange. Bartering is what you're saying. We just exchange. We barter. We barter. So 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 how so who 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 says a watermelon is worth five units of energy? Like who's creating this 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 system of of what is being how much is what equated to what across the spectrum? Your work is much more than mine, but you work harder, right? Like like how do, how do we value that? Like a person digging a ditch compared to a person who just picked mangoes off a tree compared to a person who spent their whole life. 50 years into engineering school and figuring out technology. Like this, this is a whole complex that, that takes millions and millions of minds to put together. This is a whole algorithm. Or it's very simple because everybody has the same amount of time. Now, the time that I spend, if I spend an hour digging a ditch and you spend an hour fixing a computer, it's still that same hour if we have the mindset that everybody is equally valuable. And so if an hour's worth of my work is just as valuable as an hour's worth of your work, then we can easily have a system of exchange because no one is deemed more important than anyone else. Again, well, well, not, not saying the person is deemed more important, the work is actually deemed more important because- That's just it. If all labor yeah. is, of equal value and it is if we understand it if i if i if i have someone mop my floor yeah. and it takes them 20 minutes yeah. and i have another person um repair my computer and it takes 20 minutes yeah. should i should the person who worked on the computer be deemed more valuable than the person who mopped the floor how, 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 long did, how, how long did it take that person to acquire that knowledge to build that computer? You see what I'm saying? Like the, the work put in, right? Like the people are valued. Like the doctor is valued by how long they put work into school. Like they went to school for 12 years. Somebody who went to school for 12 years, and you tell them, hey, well, you mop floors. Well, well, they don't have equal value because one sacrificed so much of their life to learn one skill set. But one person just woke up learning that skill set in two right. seconds. But, yeah, you're like, go ahead. Yeah, I got I got another one, but go right ahead. Uh, take the and, call. And that's the, it's the X. I just wanted to say that. Uh, 
You're breaking up, Baba. Can you hear me? Yeah, go right ahead, Baba. Yeah, you're you're all right. It's money, and this is what we're talking about. Money. My own natural energy deal. That's what Rudolf Price says in the book of Abundance. How much does the earth charge you to grow a watermelon? How much does the apple tree charge you for growing apples that you go and pick? There you go. But this, is the, this is the concept that man has created what nature gives freely. And that when the seed drops into the ground, it's nurtured, it's given all the energy and the nutrients the same disease to produce what it is to sustain us as living beings eating from the earth. Mm -hmm. So we have a system of capitalism and, and saying that you have to pay me for what the earth gave us that that it just maybe that 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 field to be plowed and those seeds to be dropped. But all the work was done by the energy of the earth, the sun and the rain, by the creator. And so we look at how do we charge another human being for what the Creator has given us. This is why GMO is genetically modified organisms. We have to understand that GMO literally stands for God makes the original. <laughs> we, we, we don't produce. We can't grow a blade of grass. We can't make a scab. All of that is given by the body. And what we're doing is, is we're asking to be compensated for something that comes from God. God doesn't need our money. All right now. Mm. That's how the church is ran, though. So what you say about the church community? That's how the church is ran from off money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. Listen, I understand. And I agree. Good point. <laughs> no, no, listen, I agree. God will, will let you into heaven. <laughs> listen to me. It, everything sounds good in theory. In practice, it, it, in practicality, it doesn't, right? Um, because I've never seen anything, me personally, I've never seen anything work without money being done, right? And if I've seen it work without money being done, it's on a bartering system. People who work on a bartering system, they, it's, they're more like the Amish. They're more like you know village people and that's okay i would i would love love to live like that i don't care i'm more 80 percent of people do not want to live like a village human being they want their cars they want their clothes they want their diamonds they want their jewelry they want all these first world things but they want they, but they want third world food no you got to live third world to have third world food third world food system third world bartering system you can't live in the first world in order to live in the first world you got to accept the bs that the first world gives you Right? People people don't want to, they don't want to live out in the jungle and fend for themselves. Fend from themselves from bad anim, uh, animals. How do you how do you now collect your own electricity? How do you now filter out your own, own water? Keep water, harvest that. How do you do all that? You got to learn a bunch of different skill sets before you go off the grid. I've been trying to learn these skill sets every single day. My dad, he catches his own water. He's, I think we live in a fantasy world where we think we can have everything and eat it too. No, if you want that bartering system, you got to live like someone who lives in the village. Or if the people who have the mindset to barter develop the technical skills to create what they desire, then they can have all they desire because they have the mindset of sharing. And if they have the mindset of sharing and the technical skills of creation, then they can create all of those things we desire everything from the cars to the electrical appliances and everything else. And it's still get paid the same as someone who mops a floor, you're saying? Absolutely, because even the person who spent the years learning how to fix a computer, what if the years that they spent fixing the computer were also years where the person who gave them the knowledge and they acquired that knowledge it was also on that same system of barter trade using um, what what do they call it? Time banking, a, a yeah. system where your your time is worth the same time as everyone else. So even though they spent time learning those skills, they didn't spend any money. So it's not like they have to earn what they invested they didn't invest anything but time and yeah, the time is time money. is relative to everybody 
Exactly. So, so if I spend if I spend 30, 20, 30 years developing a skill set, mm-hmm. right? And someone who spent two minutes developing a skill set, it's impossible for them two people to get paid the same amount. But what if they don't need to get paid at all? I mean, what if what you need in life is given to you for free? Your home, your 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 vehicle, your food. What if everything that you require is provided to you? So for, it for doesn't free? matter how much you earn because it's not it's not affecting the quality of your life. You can have the same quality of life in a system where no money exists if you have people of a mindset of the beehive where everyone gets what they need but there's there's only one resource in the beehive and that's 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 um honey right we're we're talking about different types of different types of resources it's Mm -hmm. the same concept though even though you're doing something different it's the same this is what you contribute to the society the day, um, the day they, your skill, they contribute their skill and everybody contributes what they contribute and everybody gets what they need because somebody's contributing what you need. And so the the ability to function is as part of the collective is that you contribute your part, yeah. whatever your skills and your knowledge are. And as a result of that, you get what you need. You get the house, you get the car, you get the you get the food, you get everything, you get you know, whatever health assistance, you know, get everything because you're giving what you have to offer. Even if it's something technical like fixing a computer and it's and the and the person who who mops the floor, they have the same kind of they the same access to whatever kind of house they want to live in, the same kind of car they want to drive, because everybody gets what they need because everybody gives what they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um you know, me, 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 me personally, I've I've never seen that happen ever in the history of this world, and I and if it did, it probably happened in a small pocket because it can't happen on a large scale. Because once again, keep in mind, people are take the path of least resistance. They don't want to do work, right? So if if me person as a person who take the path of least resistance, I'm not going to build a car and get paid the same as much as people who mop the floor. The reason why it takes years and it takes money to build these facilities, it takes plants. I own a company. I'm not going to get paid the same amount as a person who just does my my um my my social media. But would it matter? I mean, if you got whatever you needed from doing what you do, would it matter if they were considered of equal value to you? Would it matter to you? Have you, you have, your, your quality of life? It, it, it's impossible for someone who starts a company and makes every single decision in that company to make sure that company is functioning, running above above ground, above mm-hmm. water, to get paid the same as the person who who runs the packages to the UPS store. It's impossible. Okay, so let me ask you this question. After you get paid, what do you buy with your money after you get paid? Just a minute, Baba. You you, you buy resources to keep that company alive, to keep it thriving. Okay. Most companies, do, do you own a company? Yes, yes. But what, what, but what do you buy with what you earn from your company? I buy based on the system that I live in. Like okay. if, if I if I lived off grid, if I was born no, off no, grid, no, just what, what do you buy? I mean, you buy your you buy you know your, your car, your 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 equipment that you like, your entertainment. I mean, this, this is what you spend your money for, right? What, so no. what if you cut out the middle part, the money, and you just had the things given to you that you wanted? Given by who? From who? By the people who provide those things, because that's what they contribute to the society. That's okay. their portion of contribution. So, so you're saying, that they get what they need. So, so you're saying you're saying everyone just gives one to the next person. We just keep giving to each other, right? Yes. So if you give me mopping, I give you a car. Not necessarily, but if you give, <laughs> if you need mopping, you get. I'll come, come and mop for you. <laughs> I'm, saying. I'm saying. saying that if if everybody contributes what they contribute, then those who the person who who mops for you, yeah. You might not give them a car, but you might give the car to someone else who needs a car. But then somebody who has a computer might give that to you because you gave the car to somebody. So whatever you give is what you give and you get from whoever provides what you want. You get it from them. The only thing you're cutting out is the middle element, which is money. I get that. But the thing is, is, is how do you equate somebody? If one guy builds my house and one guy does does the plumbing, do they both get paid the same? Because one guy had to actually do the whole infrastructure 
and lay the pump plumbing and lay it down. It's like, who, who decides who gets paid what based on the labor of time put in, their expertise, the amount of years they put in? Somebody who put in 60 years of experience, it's impossible for, if you pay somebody who put in 60 years of experience, the same as somebody who put in 60 minutes of experience, they're gonna leave that job and say, you know what, I'm done. It happens right now in the workforce. Okay. They're, they're, they're getting, they're getting, they're getting people who have, who are tenured, who have lots of knowledge, and somebody, or let's say they say the Mexicans, they, oh, they'll come do the same job for less. Yeah, they're gonna pay them less, right? Because you owe me more. That's why you have work unions for people to get paid for to, to live, because you can. It's impossible for to pay people the same amount across a grid. It's because because not everybody has taken the time out to learn those technical skill sets. So what I'm what I'm introducing is a different way of thinking because if everyone's time is worth equal value it's and not, everybody contributes it's not though it's well not. of course it is no it, it's, it's an not. hour for me is an hour it's the same as an hour for you no, i mean not, not really not really it's 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 who has put in the work the discipline the the the, the drive the will okay it's life their, their time is more valued than a person who has not put in the time in the work. But, okay, let's think about this. Yeah. Let's say you spent eight years yeah. in school. Yeah. That eight years is gone. So whatever eight years you spent, I spent eight years doing whatever I was doing, even if it wasn't going to school. But it's the same eight years. No, but, but, so, but that's not so what you What you did with your time, that was that time. This is today. Yeah. So today... If you spend 20 minutes doing a job and yeah. I spend 20 minutes doing the job, even if I'm just mopping the floor, it's the yeah. same 20 minutes. You can't get your eight, your eight years you spent is the past. No, no, that that's knowledge acquired. That's knowledge acquired. Well, so that's what you that. contribute to the society. Well, I'm, using, knowledge acquired. I'm using past knowledge acquired to help go forward. A person, right. a person who has acquired knowledge over 20 years and specific expertise cannot be paid the same as a person who put five five years of knowledge into that same expertise. Uh, okay. if, you, if, if, you, if, if you're five years into being a plumber and I'm 50 years of being a plumber, it's impossible because I have way more technical skill sets. So I get paid more for the, for the minute and the hour for me to get paid because I put in so much time of my life. It, that, that's how people are seniored and tenured because of how long they've done something. They're, they're an expert now. It takes 20, 2, 10,000 hours to become an expert. Not 2,000 hours, not um, 2,000 hours or 3,000, 20,000. That's the level of expert, 10,000. You, if you pay an expert the same amount of money as a beginner, they're going to walk away from you. They're going to, I don't want to do it because I'm an expert. You can't pay me as someone who's a beginner. But what do you need to get paid for? The same resources that you're going to get. Like, wh why, would I, why, would, why would I bust my butt? and be tired and, and, and stressed out from all this work and making sure everything run, when someone can just sit up there and just do whatever and get paid the same. I would just sit up there and do whatever and get paid that same. But whatever they do, that's their skill. So let's say I, I braided hair and for eight hours I was braiding hair yeah. and for eight hours you were doing the work that you do. And then after that eight hours, I was able to go and buy, well, I wouldn't have to buy it. It would just be given to me. I would be given a laptop computer. And after your eight hours of your work, you would be given a, 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 a laptop computer. And it's the same exact same computer. Would you feel that because what I received for my hair braiding and what you received for your work, we both spent eight hours. Would you feel like that was unfair? How dangerous is my job? Am I am I am, am I am I building a bridge where I have to go down in the water and almost kill myself? Because there's guys who who go kill themselves. They're on power lines. They're digging ditches. They're building the building walls. They're building highways. They're doing very hard work. You mm -hmm. can't you can't pay that person the same amount of money for eight hours as you pay the person that that, that braided hair for eight. But, eight but hours. what did they want to get with their eight hours that they spent? On They're building the infrastructure of society for you to live and work on, for you okay. to drive in the streets, for you to drive a car. They, they're going to get paid. More. They're they going to get paid. They're going to get paid more because they're they're, they're they're constituting to the fabric of society and how it runs, so your life can be easier. So, there's a luxury. Is it's not a necessity. Okay. 
So <laughs> with the with the eight hours that they spent, they intended to use, they intended to receive something. If the thing that they received for their eight hours of work is the same thing that I received for the eight hours of my work, let's say for their eight, eight hours of their work, they received a a new car. Mm -hmm. And for the eight hours of the work that I did, I also received a new car. Would you say mm -hmm. that was, but, but what they wanted was the new car. So would they be upset if what I did in my eight hours, I yeah. also received a new car? You, so you're saying that they should have more because their work is more valuable. I'm saying they're equal human beings. They both have the same amount of time. But they put they in different time. Their job. They put in different work. It's more one's more strenuous than the other. One's one's more important. But the who boss, decides what work is important? The boss cannot. Well, the, the amount of labor and time put in and spent, the intensity, the knowledge it took. A boss who who has been running their company for for ten years cannot pay their employee the same amount of money they make, who's just been working for ten days. But what do you need money for? Well, well, anything, any resource, in the same car, whatever you say, it can be money, it can if be anything. If you got the resource and you didn't need the money, then would it matter if people it, got it does, the same because, or not? Because it's 10 years of my life that I've spent of work and acquiring resources and knowledge and going in debt and a bunch of different stuff. When someone put in 10 days, you, I cannot start paying you the same amount as, as I'm making as you're making because I put in so much more work than you and I, I own the company. So why would you not want people to have what you have? Because this, the only way what you're saying works is if there's no company, everyone's on a bartering system. They live, they live without things because no one's gonna put in more work. Why would I put in more work in you and harder work and do something for ten years when I can say, you know what? Damn, this person getting paid the same amount as money as me. Uh, I've been putting in ten years and they've been doing a job for ten months. Okay, let me just quit this job and go to another job and just mop the floor and get paid the same as the person been doing it for ten days. But <laughs> People kill themselves over working for companies because it's so much stress. Well, and the reason why it's stressful because it's not work they want to do. But what if you were doing the work you want to do and you like doing and you invested time in doing it and you got what you received, what you wanted to receive for doing it? It, it, it sounds it sounds simple, but it's not. It because somebody who has put in time will always get paid more than someone who hasn't. There's called a level of mastery, a tenure, a senior seniority. People get seniority based on what they've done. The, 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 the grandmother is, is more respected than the child because the grandmother has more knowledge. So we respect the grandmother more than we respect the child because they, they hold the key to life and success because they have more knowledge. When a grandmother dies, a grandparent dies, they say a library is burned down when a grandmother dies or a grandparent dies because they have knowledge of how to make the world work. A, a child dies who have never acquired knowledge. They don't. They don't have that knowledge. So when a when a grandmother talk or a grandparent talk who's lived a hundred years and done a bunch of things, they're, 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 per minute is more valuable than a person who's never done anything per minute because you have no real life experience. That person has eons of experience. It's been different places. So yeah, I'm gonna value their time more than I'm gonna value your time because they can give me more 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 knowledge per minute than you can because you don't have the same knowledge and experience. It's about skin and game. It's it's about work equity, sweat equity. You can't. I can't now diminish your sweat equity to somebody who's never done anything. I have to respect that person who's put in a hundred years of work over someone put in a, a year of work more. Yeah. And I'm going to pay that person more. And to and to say that is like for me. I'm just like okay. Well, well, let me just stop and just do the same as what that person who didn't put work in. Then no one will be an expert at anything. How do you how do you how do you now build a system on uh, everyone paid the same? You put you put in thousands of years and you put in one minute and y'all all get paid the same. What man? No one would do anything. They'll all do what that one person who's not who's never put in work do. Is it because the incentive for working? Is it because you like the work or because you want the money? What is the reason for working? We live a like we live a life like I told you a path of least resistance. Every human being does that. So if I, it, it's it's return on investment. Whatever I invest in, I'm gonna, I'm expecting a certain amount of return. If I've inspect, if I've put in 10 years of investment, 
If you give me a return of someone who put in two days of an investment, yo, you pulling a fast for them. <laughs> well, one last thing, and, and Zella knows why I'm doing this, because we're actually creating something. And so we have to look at the mindset of people. Oh, I get it. I get but it. Now, let's say I have a pie, you know, a pie, yeah. you know, yeah. apple pie. We love apple pie. No, no, no. Yeah. And you have two. Uh-huh. And you have two. We can say the pie. Oh, sweet potato is even mm-hmm. better. Sweet potato pie. <laughs> you got a big round sweet potato pie. And you got three people. Yeah. Uh, and one is an engineer yeah. and builds bridges. And one mops floors for a living. Yeah. And one owns a company and employs 50 people. Yeah. There are three human beings. Yeah. How should the pie be divided? Um, on based on that economy and, and what people value in that economy. Okay. What about if they all three got an equal share of the pie? Well, I I, I don't understand what what that means because I just told yeah. you. I, I mean, this, this is not a symbolic. But this is the actual pie. This is just a pie. So, so we, we all value so, pie, right? So why would any... I didn't say anything. Be... I didn't say anything, yeah. Okay, yeah, anything. right. So, so then, there we oh, go. So, so we have pie, right? We pie, all pie. We, we only value this pie, right? Right, we only value this pie. We, we all want a piece of pie. We're three different people, and here's one pie. How do we divide okay. it? How do we decide so who... The person who mops learned that skill set just because their mother was doing it one day, and it, and it took them five yeah. minutes to learn how to sweep. How long does it take, take, typically take you to learn how to sweep? Five minutes? Mm-hmm. So that person took five minutes to learn how to sweep. That person who builds bridges, it took them about 10 years of how to build a bridge that's going to keep people safe and not die. Because mm-hmm. now we're protecting people. So now like, people's life is in danger. So it took him 10 years. And not only 10 years to learn, now another 10, 20 years to build. Because no one just builds it overnight, right? You gotta have the proper infrastructure. You gotta proper knowledge. You gotta hire the proper people. You gotta get the proper resources and and and, um, and and supplies to build that bridge, right? So that person's that person. It probably took them about twenty minutes, let's say, right? Then a person who owns a company, he's had to make every decision right to make that company last. Most businesses fell within the first two years. In the third year, probably only about two percent last, right? So this person is a two percent human being who has had to go through the ups and downs and, and the hardships of building a company. So therefore, that person is valued if that company is making money, because not every company makes money. Even though Uber is a big company, it doesn't make money, mm-hmm. right? So now we're saying, okay, you put in 20 years, you put in 30 years, your work is more stressful because now you got other people's lives. You, you're putting money in other people's pockets. So now everybody depends on you. You're doing payroll, you're hiring people, you're firing people. You're doing every single thing. You're, you have much more responsibility of 100 people in a company and millions of people over that person building bridge, right? Mm-hmm. So a million, a billions of people respond uh, depend on you to build that bridge, right, or they die. Hundreds of people depend on you to build the right company or they don't make money and their family don't eat. And you build, you would a mop. Who's depending on you? you? You just have a mop. And it took you five minutes. It took that person 10, 15 years. To that person 20 years, more people are at risk for what those people do. So yeah, I'm not going to give these people the same because who's more at risk? Who puts more money in more pockets? Who supports more families? These Those two people who build bridges and run companies are, are making sure that everybody else is living and making money and their kids and their family and then their health care and their dental care. They're doing a lot of stuff. So you think, you think they're gonna say, I, you know what? it's okay. I want I'll give that person the same piece of the pie as this was mopping the floor. Okay. But I have all the responsibility in the world. Okay. So now when's the last time you went to a, a gathering at someone's home? Yeah. And when they divided up the food, they said, oh, well, you can't have as much as this person. He's a doctor. And so I'm giving him a bigger plate and extra piece of dessert. But you're unemployed, so uh, I'll give you a slice of bread. When's the last time that happened? Or did everybody eat equally and no, it didn't matter what you did? That's a false equivalence because we're, we're talking about actual 
things that we, uh, we, we found a medium and money for us to pay each other, for us to live in a way for we can exchange. It's, 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 a, it's a medium of exchange, right? But is every human being of right equal Baba. But that, that, is every human being of equal value? That's the question. Every everybody, every human being isn't because not everybody put in the same time and, and, and labor. So so we don't get all get paid the same. So we, you're a lesser, you're a less you have you are of lesser value as a human being based on what you do. You're gonna get more money based, yeah. You're gonna get more money based in this world we live in. You don't deserve to eat as much as someone who is valued more. I'm telling you the way the world works. So the, what what the way sense? the way the world works is that if you put in your time, the amount of time you put in, you get compensated for that. The amount of time you put in, the amount of labor you give in, you, your compensation is based on that, not just by being alive. No one just gets by being alive. That's, so, that, that's not the world we live in. That no human does that. All no, right. Like, like, like that's that. It, it's an idealistic world. Yeah, I get it, and I would love to live in a world like that. Okay, that's but, all that's needed. If you want to live in a world like that, then that's the world we should be creating. Because it, what we have is not working. That's it, why we're more. It'll never be created. Unless you have the right mindset. It will never be created. Until we have the intelligence of the bee, we will be in conflict. Bob, Bob, come on, make your son hold on to the conflict. Face the concept, then we'll solve our problems. Listen, but until we do. There's no way impossible. <laughs> like, that means I I know others, we, we have kept her way past the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm glad I've, uh, you know, um, opened your mind. <laughs> okay. You didn't open my eye. I, I have that. I have that bartering system type of mind, but it doesn't work in the world. Like, I'm talking about practicality. What works? What what doesn't work? What has worked and what not worked? Hi, this is Bob Kwame. How many people we got on the phone? Uh oh, he's still there. Uh oh, I, I think it's past ten. I think they. I think they cut our our our. Um, they did. Everything just dropped. Yeah. But Baba, Baba, are you still there? Huh? Baba, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead, because they just cut everybody yeah. off. So go ahead. I think this is his okay. mic. And, and what I'm hearing is that, you know, generationally and, and, and last Thursday, he was talking about the grandmother. Grandmother's lap time or grandfather's lap time given to a child back two generations is a different than what it is today because each generation has a relative obscurity most of the village version that we all feel. And what we have is, is that that mother modeling that child to go in her womb and then to raise that child, there isn't a compensation that's, that's going to divide that tie up in the family because there isn't a price tag you put on the human life that we have to overstand. What you do with your life and how you use your time, or you use the, the word time and say emit, how you emit your energy and constructing the world that you're creating is to be better than the world that was your grandparents. And this is what our ancestors have here with guiding us. The thing that we're looking at is, is that that is not our way, that is capitalism, and that's the way in which they, they created us to believe that we have to follow the system. Mm -hmm. And this is why the system is not working because it's out of order. You know, you, we say about our, the example you gave of this person want a car and that person, both of them is damaging the planet. Mm -hmm. To make that vehicle, you're damaging the planet. And what we're doing is, is that are we constructing a new in, uh, a new environment, or are we continuously doing the destruction to the earth in order to make ourselves feel good by mm. having faith? Mm. Well said, Baba Kwame. Well but Baba Kwame. Baba Kwame, thank you for that, because the thing is, is that we, we wouldn't make these destructive things for the environment. We wouldn't force kids in, in, in Congo to, to, to dig up coltan to build your cell phone or, or your cars or your computers. You would, we wouldn't have any of this stuff because if we're trying to do good by people in nature, none of this stuff would exist. Phones won't exist. None of it will. Like, like it, it would literally be us bartering, living like the Amish, um, 
uh, probably we wouldn't even be using horses. We would just walk everywhere. We wouldn't do much. We would have no, we would have no reach around this world. Like just, just to think about that mindset. Yeah, capitalism say what it is. It has advantages and disadvantages. Bartering has advantages and disadvantages. We can't say one is all good and one is all bad. It's mm. not. It's like living in Jamaica. One's not all good and living in Europe is not all bad, right? It's just, I need to see an example of that working in a, in a system thriving on that. You know, I've read about certain things like in, in Egypt. I lived in Egypt and I read about how, you know, they build the pyramids. But their people had to put in some work. <laughs> their people, oh. it was crazy. People got compensated differently. But what about what about if we learned a different means of communication, which did the same thing as a cell phone? What if we learned a different way of transportation, which did the same thing as an automobile, and these methods were in harmony with nature and didn't destroy any parts of the planet? What if we learned those things? I would say it's theory until it's actually being proven. You know, I can say what if about a lot of things, but I like to work in what what I know and what's what's here. I can't tell you other than what I know or what hasn't worked. Like I, like I have to have legitimate, feasible, tangible things for me to understand the way that something else would work. If I don't have it, I have no knowledge of it ever happening and there's no nothing being documented. Cool, okay. I've, 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 I've saw where, where um, you know, uh, the ancient Kemet, you know, the, the Egyptians were traveling and doing whatever. Cool, but we don't have that technology. That technology was lost 12,000 years ago. Mm. We're here now, so I get it. I understand that. But what we're living now with the resources we have now, we got to make it way with what we have. And in order to continue to, to either even try to find that, different, like like the pyramid. The reason why the pyramid is still there is because it's built from the earth. You right. can't destroy something that is built from the right. earth. There you, right? go. you can destroy the phone. You can destroy the technology, but you can't destroy itself. The earth is going to destroy you before you destroy it. Right? So there you go. I understand. Mm-hmm. Trust me. I get it. I've thought about this through and through. And I prefer a life like that. I grew up in the hood with no money. I get it. I grew up dirt poor. I would love for everybody to have money, but that's just not the world we live in. How do we create this? I don't know. Where can we try to start it? Possibly. Has something ever like that ever worked? Yeah, but over twelve thousand years ago, that has been lost. Now, if we tap back into that knowledge, cool. But then that's kind of like sci-fi. Like right? it's like you know, who knows what and what's going to happen. Um, but you know, there's so much that you taught today that people had no knowledge of. You don't know until you know. I mean, so much of what you taught today, people had never heard and didn't know it existed until you taught it. Yeah. So you don't know what you know until you know it. Yeah. So All we need to do is seek the knowledge and find it. Yeah. So therefore, we've got to bring knowledge to the table, not theory. Well, alrighty now, knowledge right. versus theory. Yeah, gotta bring knowledge. Baba, did I lose you? No, you didn't. And knowledge, you know, knowledge and wisdom. Theory is is, is a uh, one and one is two. But the thing is, one and one is is, is not always two. It can be looked at as eleven. But the whole thing of it is, is wisdom and knowledge. You know, understanding that knowledge and where does the thought come from? How did that person conceive that thought? Where does the consciousness come from to give that person the ability to see that I can take this brick and put it on top of this brick and, and measure it out to where I put all these bricks in, 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 a, in a square and then it just keeps stacking them on top of where I was until I get a point. That was all divine intelligence because we conceive that the consciousness of the creator is allowing us to conceive of what we do with it because the university of that we live in is the university of life and the part of that knowledge in which is given called consciousness through the water plants with the trees that you can get a phd in nature mm. and the thing mm. that we're doing is, is that we are exchanging what last year is something that we didn't know about the watermelon line. But if you look back in time, that grandma knew that if, if we cut these off and pickle them, then we eat them because there was a certain thing that was given to them saying, we don't know all the science of it, 
but we know that it works. See, and, and each generation has taken in the time out and, and investigated and say, oh, this is a year, this is a net, this is a good. So what we're doing is, is that we're not reinventing the wheel, we're just adding new tread to go down the road of life. Mm. Well said, Baba Kwame. I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank all of you for uh, listening and for getting this uh, inter- information. And be sure and share this information because everybody needs to know what's going on here. They dropped out for a second, but they are back. And I want to share some of these uh, comments that we have. Soul Purpose Healing, uh, Deborah says, um, Zelda, we're going to get you somewhere. No, don't get me to Jamaica. Get me to Jamaica. Uh-uh. I'm where I want to be. Jamaica is where I want to be. Uh, Viata from Soul Purple Sealy says, people look at getting a return on their investment of time and money. Claiming people don't invest a lot of time or money in their skills, so their expected return is lower. Wow. Yeah. There's a possibility of that. And she also says we give financial rewards for the investments people make in their lives. Utopia coming soon to a conscious city near you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Viata. Yeah. Just like they are, there are positives and negatives in this technology. Not yeah. going back to walking when flying cars are being created. I know that's right. Well, you know, if you can get a solar-powered flying car that does not damage the economy or create pollution, you know, why not? I mean, these are things, uh, you know, like Brother mentioned, there's so much knowledge that we used to have that's gone. We have to reclaim yeah. that and more. And, you know, the first mindset to change really is the idea that that there's a hierarchy or some people are better than others. If, if we could grasp the thought that everybody is of equal value, even though they might perform different functions, then we can have a society where everybody has what they need and nobody has to suffer to just try to get some basic necessities. And we don't have to diminish the quality of life because everybody contributes to that quality of life. So whatever your contribution is, whether it's sweeping floor, braiding hair, uh, building computers or running a farm, whatever it is, that's your contribution. And for that contribution, you should be able to get what you need to survive and to thrive. That's mm-hmm. simple simple concept and we can do that yes and we and we are doing that it's just a slow pace slow pace and sometimes a slow pace is a better pace and for those who are watching online and uh viewing this on our youtube and facebook channel thank you so much for uh, being here with us today and please like share and subscribe to our uh youtube page uh excuse me our Facebook page. I want to pull it up. We got a, uh, a new one here. We've got a couple. We got the Higher Learning TV show, and we also have HLN TV show. So this is the one that I want you to like and subscribe. When you go there and see this water, you will know that you're at the right place. HLN TV show. So this is where I want you to go to like and subscribe. You see that? You see up there at the top, it says Higher Learning TV show, but it, yeah. So just subscribe that and please share that like and subscribe. And you see all our, our past shows. There's Lance. Thank you, Lance, for being here today. There's uh Naima. Well, you just go down and you'll see. So just wanted to share that with you. Oh, and please go to our YouTube channel as well, which is Higher Learning TV Show. And last but not least, um uh what did she say? Uh, oh, she says, uh, not uh, jets and times. Yeah, we're in the jets and times. We really are. We got flying cars and all that good stuff. We got all of that. Yes. And them. So be sure and go to this website. Uh, e, where is the uh, brand? I'm pulling it up here. Easy. There you go. Easyherbal.com. That is the website for exotic herbs and superfood supplements that er, that uh, Montre Hardage and Lance Kern um, are the entrepreneurs of. I am a longtime fan of Seamoss, so go to that website. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I've been taking it for a long time. I'll probably be taking it for the rest of my life because I know I feel better, and you will too. So be sure and go to Easy Herb, EasyHerbal.com. Any closing? You know, thoughts? you know, Zelda. When when we uh, when we stretch our minds and think of the possibilities, because we've been conditioned for so many generations to think that there is a power over us that we don't have the ability to overcome. It's difficult for people to think in terms of creating a different society than what we have. Just like during the slave, the enslavement period, after a couple of generations, it was difficult for the people who were held captive to envision that this is not how it's always been and therefore they couldn't change it. So the first thing you have to change is the idea that you don't have the power to change it. And we can see that we change it because that, 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 that system no longer exists. But while it was in existence, people who were in it believed they didn't have the power to change it. And so they didn't. And they thought it was, it was stupid for people to try to, where are you going to run, run away from where, you know, you can't leave. This is it. God said we're supposed to be slaves. They believe that. And as long as they believe that they stayed in the, in the, system of servitude, system of enslavement. So mm -hmm. as long as we believe that capitalism is not something we can get rid of or that this monetary system is the way we have to live, as long as we believe that, then we'll keep perpetuating it. But as soon as we realize we always had the power to eliminate it, that's when it will disappear. That's when we will create something else. It's just a matter of mind, deciding that we have the power and using the power that we already have. And that's Block Talk holding me back. Well, that show is over with. Uh, <laughs> you're right on target, Naima, but I just want to remind our uh, viewers and mm -hmm. those who are watching on our channels, the Global Virtual Teen Talent Contest is every last Saturday of the month from 12 noon until 1 p.m. Please share this with your uh, teens in your community. Ages 13 through 19 can compete to win prizes, scholarships, and Cash. So all that information will be on my blog on zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com as well as we leave you. Reminding you tomorrow, join us 7 until 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on blogtalkradio.com, The Female Solution. And I forgot to mention about the um, um, donations for the for our uh, homeless Project on Instagram. You go to our uh, page, Instagram.com slash HLN.homeless.project. Uh, and if you'd like to contribute to help the homeless get heaters, generators, and uh, butane, they always need butane. Even though it might be 70 degrees at night in Chicago, it's a little cold outside. And this is where you can send those tax deductible donations to higherlearningnetwork.org. Cash app is Zelda Speaks. And PayPal, uh, it's higherlearningnetwork.org. Just go to the website, all the information is there. And uh, you'll, you'll see that inf information. And this will help us help continue to help the homeless keep warm and pay for those prizes and scholarships for our youth. We're always talking about how bad they are. And they killing and carjacking. Well, let's do something about that. We can do something about that. Make a donation because, you know, you could skip a hair or a nail or a shopping experience and, and make that happen. Karen Hill, 227, one of our team members says, even the Amish sell various products using modern vendors and stores. I'm like, you can write that, Karen. Thank you so much, Karen. I missed my uh, 9.30 call this morning, so I guess it'll be at 10.30 this morning. So uh -oh. thank you, Amy thank all of you for uh, participating in this. Be sure and check out onaireverywhere.com with Naima Latif of the Media Connection. And be sure and text us if you want updates and we will uh, send you that weekly. We don't send it out every day. Uh, text Monday Morning Mindfulness to 219-699-2114. This has been a very enlightening show. NFL players changing the game. And the after show with Naima Latif has been my pleasure. It has been an honor 
and a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow morning. Not me, Jody Susan, Susan Essentials on self sell care. And we will be right back here and we will do it all over again. You think today was good. Maybe wait till you tune in tomorrow. So stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned And for more of The Female Solution. And thank you so much for watching. The Female Solution Global Radio TV Show invites you to an invigorating conversation with our team of hosts Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Time. Start your week with Monday Morning Mindfulness with Zelda Speaks. Tuesdays, self sell Care with Jody Susan. Wednesdays, Repairing Broken Families with Naima Latif and co-host Kareem Hamid. Thursdays, Soulful Solutions with Dr. Debbie Green. And Fridays, Health and Well-Being with Viata. Saturdays, tune in 12 noon to 2 p.m. Central Time. First Saturday, Success Strategies with Jana. Second Saturday, Wendy Williams Esquire on Relationships. Third Saturday, Move Around with Deborah. And fourth Saturday, Wisdom with Mama D. Join us Sundays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time for Soul Purpose Healing with Beata. Call in and comment 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak. We love you on Windy City Live. Yes, we do. Tell us, how did all this happen? How did this come about? Well, I play me. I play Val Warner in Chirac, which is really cool. So when people see this movie, they are literally seeing Val, and I am a reporter in the movie. We talk about the violence, but what can we do personally? I think we got to be engaged, and I think engaged in a number of things. In our block, in our home, in our neighborhood, we got to be engaged. We got to fight the issues. We got to fight a government that is abandoned, you know, whole communities on the south and the west side. Um, we got to fight a governor who's cut out every youth employment program, who's cut out violence prevention programs, who's abandoned um, our communities and the poor and the vulnerable. And I think we got to reach out to our brothers on the street and love them and respect them and help them, not just demonize them. I'll just say, like, first of all, give you history of coming to Chicago and telling my jokes. As a young cat, I'm 37 now. I started about almost 15 years ago. Elroy taking me under his wing, let me do some jokes here and there for the radio station and all that kind of stuff. I learned that no matter what you do and how much of a genuine heart you have and if you're coming from a good place, people are going to criticize if they don't agree with what you're doing. Yo, what's up? It's your man Tony Schofield from 106.3 Chicago's R&B and you are watching men on higher learning. Now, I used to hang around with some men that was into some higher learning. It just wasn't that kind of higher learning, but I got myself together now, okay? What is it that you do in your quiet time, in your meditation time, that allows you to bring us the films that you do? I sit courtside the Mass Square Garden, world's most famous arena. so much for joining me. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks, the stressologist. Any stress in your life? Well, most of us do. Unfortunately, we don't know what to do with that stress, especially as it relates to worry. I was once a worry wart, worried about everything, and I finally figured it out with some training. Yeah, I've been certified with the American Society of Training and Development, National Speakers Association, and a host of others. But none of those organizations helped me stop worrying. They just gave me validation for the public to see what credentials I have. So the credentials I, I have now are from life experience, and I've learned how not to worry. And you can learn how not to worry, too. Because it is indoctrinated in us to worry. We don't have the answers, so 
we think the worst is going to happen. Well, I got a solution to that. And that pro and that is the worry workshop. So I'm going to pull that up for whoops, pull that up for you on my blog. Why do you worry when you don't have to? Go to my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com, and you can sign up right there and find out how you. And remember, sharing is caring. If you care about yourself and, and your loved ones, help them see their way out of a mess. Give them the gift. It makes a great birthday gift. It makes a great holiday gift. So instead of running to the store, getting something that they really might not need, give them a worry-free life. Give them the gift of a worry-free existence. And thanks for sharing. Make it a great day. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. Are you stressed out? Are you ready to learn some quick techniques on how to de-stress immediately? Then book your free 30-minute consultation with Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach at higherlearningnetwork.org. Thanks for sharing. their talented teams. Are you ready to showcase your skills and potentially win cash prizes and scholarships? We're excited to announce our global virtual team talent contest, where you can enter by submitting a one-minute video of your unique talent. Here's how to participate. 1. Record a one-minute video of yourself performing your talent. 2. Share the video on TikTok. Include the hashtag hashtag global virtual team talent contest. 3. Tag 3 friends who also have amazing talents. Submit your video by the deadline. We can't wait to see all of the amazing talents that you have to offer. Remember to be creative and have fun with it. The top talents will be selected by a panel of judges and will be announced shortly after. So don't wait, start filming and good luck! And thank you for hanging in there and sharing and staying with us while I share this information with you. It has been my honor and my privilege. I will see you back here next Monday morning for Monday Morning Mindfulness. Remember to practice your breathing. Inhale deeply. And exhale. And I promise you that you will feel a whole lot better. And forgive me for not sharing this with you earlier, but this is all about meditation and activating the power within. We meditate to activate. And here's another favorite. Inhale faith and exhale fear. Inhale affirmations and exhale self-doubt. And this is for the genius in you that I leave with you. Inhale genius and exhale doubt. 
And that is my story and I'm sticking to it. And remember to get your The Mindfulness Project. How to learn how to put everything out of your head so that you can have peace wherever you are. And that's what's available. I forgot. It's right here. The Mindfulness Breakthrough System, Four Steps to Mindfulness. You can text me at 219-699-2114. And you can have it digitally. I'm looking at my ring right here. You can have that digitally because nobody does CDs anymore. I got CDs. It's so funny. Here, <laughs> tell me. My niece tell me, Auntie, don't nobody listen to CDs no more. Well, I, these are props right about now, but as you can see, there are four CDs in there. And if you don't have a CD player, we can send it to you digitally. And it's a great gift for a family man. Oh, for Mother's Day, for birthdays, for Saturday, any day, Tuesday. Hello. Well, thank you so much. I love y'all. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, and we will do it all over again. Did I get all the comments there? What is the email address to vote? Oh, for the, um, to vote. HLNTVshow at gmail.com. HLNTVshow at gmail.com. And then we'll be on high, uh, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, YouTube channel, Higher Learning TV Show. And I'll pull that back in there so you can see it to um, every last Saturday of the month. Thank you for that question because I, I did need to pull that up. It's the Global Virtual Teen Talent Contest. What will we do without our teens? I stopped complaining about it. I'm doing something to help, and I hope that you'll help, too. Thank you so much. Stay on Purpose Team Power, and we'll do it all over again tomorrow morning. And I will see you when I see you. Text me, 219-699-2114. Make it a great day. Thanks for watching.